Tell them excited. Welcome to this special edition of Local News Live, The Great American Eclipse. I'm Deborah Alfaron. We are also excited here. I'm Rashida Kaba. <laughs> All eyes are on the skies as millions of Americans are getting ready for the Great American Eclipse. Now, this happens when the moon passes between the sun and the earth, blocking out all daylight. We'll see what's called a diamond ring. In less than 30 minutes, the sky will go dark in Texas, almost as if it were night. The eclipse will travel through 15 states, and its last U.S. stop is Maine. We're going to make sure you get to see it. Yeah, we're taking you along for the ride across the entire country. We have local reporters covering the path of totality from our network of gray television stations. They'll be showing us how communities are prepping for this phenomenon, from festivals to viewing parties, all the way to concerts and more. Plus, senior national correspondent Peter Zampa is in Niagara Falls. LNL's Molly Martinez is live from Erie, Pennsylvania. And our Ryan Henson shows us a celebration in the nation's capital. But first, LNL meteorologist Sandra Brogan and WWBT meteorologist Ross Runner are with us for a look at the forecast. Yeah, Ross, Sandra, tell us who along the path of totality is going to be lucky enough to have some clear skies. You, you know, we do have some areas that are looking at some clear skies, but, you know, some other areas will have to deal with some cloud cover. Our first stop is going to be in Eagle Pass, and from there you can see we do have some cloud cover in the area, but as we continue northward, uh, we're going to be stopping at Waco. And look, Ross, it's looking a little better than Yeah, it. definitely looking a little better in the Waco area. We continue off to the northeast. Tyler, Bryan, Texas, we're looking pretty good there. There are some clouds. So you have a mix of clouds and sunshine there in northeastern Texas. And then we come up into Arkansas, Sandra. Yeah, we'll be checking in with our friends at KAIT in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So things are looking pretty good there. You know, maybe just a few high, thin clouds. Clouds may be in and out, but still it's looking, it's looking pretty nice. And even as we head northward up to Cape Girardeau, looking pretty good there as well. So... It looks beautiful there, yeah, Sandra. Yeah, a lot of areas are looking, lucking out. Evansville is looking good. Indianapolis, over towards uh, north and western Ohio, Toledo, Cleveland. You started out the day with clouds, but skies are cleared out this afternoon there. Yeah, and they've got a big baseball game as yes, well. Yes, they do. So, you know, got some nice weather for it. But Erie, Pennsylvania, looking at some cloud cover right yeah, now. Yeah, you knew there had to be a rough spot somewhere. And really from Erie up towards Niagara and Buffalo, Watertown, New York, you have some break in the clouds right now, but the clouds are probably going to be moving in. Yeah, a lot of this is moving towards the east. So if you do have some cloud cover off towards your west, unfortunately, it may arrive in time for totality. Burlington, Vermont, looking pretty good right now. I think you'll be on that cusp. I think, you know, hopefully those clouds will hold off and make it into your area during totality, but it is going to be close. It's just some high clouds right now, and hopefully, again, they'll still get a good view there in Burlington. Presque Isle, Maine, that is the place to be in Maine where skies are crystal clear at this point. I know we had a few clouds earlier today, but things looking good in northern Maine. As we get ready for this scientific phenomenon, let's take a look at the science behind it. Yeah, I recently got to sit down with NASA's Patrick Kane to learn all about eclipses, the sun, and what we can expect later on today. Dr. Kane, there are several different types of eclipses. We experienced one back in 2017. Can you kind of talk a little bit about the different kinds of eclipses and how they are different? Sure. There are, there are three basic kinds. There's the total eclipse, like much of the country is going to be seeing on April 8th. Um, that is when the alignment is precisely right, where the moon slides directly in front of the, the in, directly in front of the sun and completely blocks out the light. Uh, leaving, leaving behind only the solar corona, the outermost layer of the atmosphere of the sun. Uh, there's also a partial eclipse where the alignment isn't quite as precise. So the moon only, bo only blocks a portion of, of the sun's face. Um, so you'll see some dimming. Uh, you, you definitely want to be viewing those with the right sort of equipment, the right solar, solar safety, uh, solar, uh, the right eclipse viewing glasses. Um, and uh, then there's a hybrid eclipse where you sort of get a, a, a partial and a total all at the same time. And I know that we're going to see the sky darken briefly during the eclipse, but how is this going to impact wildlife? You know, people in the Midwest, uh, there's a little bit more wildlife there. There are animals on farms and such. How are they going to be impacted? How are they going to, uh, how are they expected to uh, react to this? 
Well, we expect that animals will start to think it's getting close to nighttime. It, it looks a lot like dusk during a, a, a total eclipse and even during a partial eclipse. Um, so we expect that birds would return to roost, animals are, might return, start returning to their homes. Um, we expect the sounds to change, the sounds that the birds are making, for example, uh, to change. And, and we're hoping that, that people will be out and paying attention to those things and actually helping us take data. Yeah, so it's certainly going to be an exciting time, especially for those who are experiencing it for the first time. So we know that scientists can create artificial eclipses to view the outer portion of the sun's corona, but why are natural eclipses, like the one that we're going to experience on April 8th, so important? Well, in a natural eclipse, we're actually using the moon as, as, as the thing that's blocking the sun. In an artificial eclipse, we use a, usually a piece of metal, a, a little disk of metal. Um, but during a natural eclipse, you can actually see deeper into the sun's uh, outermost layer, that, that solar corona. So we can actually learn a little bit more about that really important region close to the surface of the sun uh, and how it transitions into the corona and then the and energy propping, propagating outwards into the rest of the solar system. So we learn more. And within the past month or so, the sun has thrown out some pretty powerful bursts of radiation. Uh, can you talk about what it means when the sun becomes more active like that? True. The, the, the sun actually goes through an 11 year solar cycle, we call it, uh, ranging from solar minimum, where there are very few sunspots, not much in the way of activity on the surface of the sun, all the way to solar maximum, which is what we're approaching now, where we see more sunspots, more solar flares, more releases of energetic particles and what we call coronal mass ejections. So we just see more stuff on the sun during, during solar maximum than we do during solar minimum. And we know those eclipse sunglasses are going to be really important for everybody to be able to enjoy. Uh, Dr. Patrick Kane from NASA, thanks so much for joining us here on Local News Live. Oh, happy to be here. Thanks. Got a little bit more knowledgeable there. Texas is going to be one of the first places in the country to experience totality. And that's going to be happening pretty Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Let's go to KGNS reporter Lisa Lee Garza, who joins us live. Lisa Lee, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. We're here in Eagle Pass, like you mentioned. We have actually here with us our chief meteorologist, Richard Heatway Burler, who is going to explain to us a little bit about the conditions right now. It is windy and cloudy heat wave. You said we can already see a little piece of the moon. Eagle Pass is the first city in the United States to see the total solar eclipse heat wave. Can you talk to us a little bit about the clouds? Well, we have a 4,000 foot layer of Gulf of Mexico moisture, which did produce a solid overcast about an hour ago, but above that layer of moist air, it's dry. So if we get the atmosphere to stir over a deep enough depth, we tap into the drier air above and it mixes some of the low clouds away. And we're starting to see some of the low clouds uh, mix away. So I'm hopeful that we'll get some glimpses. One little factor that uh, is that we have with the subtropical jet stream cirrus clouds high above 35,000 feet up and that's dimming the view a little bit but they're thin enough at this point where we're still able to see uh, the sun if the low clouds uh, give us a break. That's right, heat wave. So we've been seeing a little bit of the sun here and there. As you can see, there's a lot of people behind us, a lot of people already looking up at the sky to see that sliver of the moon here in our coverage area. We have been here for many hours now. We have been seeing people from all over the world and they're so excited. They have been planning for many years heat wave. I know we have our sunglasses right here. We're also ready to look at the eclipse, of course, with our safe wear. Heatwave said this was perfectly fine, so we trust him with our life, right, Heatwave? <laughs> when it comes to the eclipse. I just wanted to mention <laughs> one thing, if, if there's a, a moment. I, I can't believe how accurately we can forecast these eclipses now, down to the second, down to almost the foot of accuracy. Back in 1925, they came within four seconds and 14 city blocks of where it was going to be. No computers then. Now we know exactly. Four minutes and 32 seconds here in Eagle Pass. We'll toss it back to you and we will have the coverage later. Oh my gosh, you guys are excited. You're us together. Both of you so smart about everything that is going on there. Thank you so much from our station KGNS and put those glasses on soon. Yeah, make sure you have them handy. <laughs> exactly. So Poplar Bluff, Missouri is a popular place to be today. People there 
are gathering to see the sun disappear behind the moon and experience the night sky in the afternoon. It's going to be a sight to see the city organize park cleanups, shuttles, and more in order to prepare for this big day. And that's where we find Joe McLean from our station KFBS. Hey, Joe, what's going on behind you there? Well, a lot. It's been a big celebration all day, really all weekend. As you mentioned, uh, th as the city, as the local chamber of commerce, as local organizations, businesses, they had you know, a long time because we knew this was coming. Eclipses are very, uh, very easy things to predict as long as humans have been watching the sun. So we knew this was coming. That gave uh, people a lot of time to prepare. I want to show you uh, the, the, some of the activity that's going on behind me. Down the hill from where I'm at right now is uh, the campus of uh, Poplar Bluff High School. So I'm just going to pan really quick and you can see bouncy houses. I haven't had a chance to jump on there yet, but it uh, looks fantastic. There's food vendors. There's uh, there's souvenirs. I picked up a shirt uh, that said, I got mooned in Poplar Bluff. Fantastic. Uh, hilarious pun there. Uh, but you can see the amount of people. This is a very, as you said, popular spot. It's called Poplar Bluff, not Popular Bluff, but it is popular today uh, because this is a uh, in the path of totality, but it's also near the middle of the path of totality. And that means you get a couple extra seconds of, uh, of, that, of that complete totality of the eclipse coming up. So four minutes and eight seconds is how long uh, uh, Poplar Bluff is going to be experiencing the complete uh, 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 total eclipse. We did see uh, um, I, uh, around in 2017, it just looks like a few minutes of just dusk. And so uh, we're also here with uh, the State Emergency Management Agency is uh, managing resources for this huge influx of tourists. Uh, so we're going to be watching this and uh, we will uh, obviously continue Continue to cover this and uh, watch uh, as we all sort of unite in this astrological event when everybody looks in the same direction up. <laughs> Back to you. Hey, Joe, I noticed there's a little bit of wind behind you in the background. What's the temperature out there looking like right now? It's a balmy 75 degrees. Very, very nice. It started out really cold here in the in in the Midwest. Uh, it was pretty chilly. Some people uh, even saw some frost on the car in the morning. But it, it, Missouri here in the Midwest, it, it the temperature goes all over the place. It's nice. It's uh, it's it's. Uh, beautiful, a little, about, about 75, and you can see behind me too. Not going to have too much trouble with cloud cover, uh, it appears. So uh, we've been spared that. That's uh, absolutely fantastic luck. All right, we know that temperature is going to dip a little bit during the eclipse. Joe McLean, we will check back in with you later on in the show from our station KFBS. Thanks so much. You know, it's wonderful that we have all of these amazing reporters all across the country from our gray stations right smack in the path of totality. Like wow. Joe, we also have LNL meteorologist Sandra Brogan and WWBT meteorologist Ross Runner for a look at the weather along the path of totality, guys. And Deborah and Rashida were looking good as you saw Joe's report there in Poplar Bluff. We had a lot of sunshine and blue sky out there. Now, of course, South Texas, they're dealing with some cloud cover, but hopefully enough breaks in the clouds that will get some good visibility here from Eagle Pass. And I think the visibility will probably be a little bit better up towards Tyler and Waco. Now, once you get into Arkansas, things looking good there through southeastern Missouri into southern Illinois. Then we come up into Indiana, looking good there through Ohio. And then we have a little bit of a trouble spot here once we get into western New York State. So anywhere from Erie, Pennsylvania, up through Niagara, Buffalo, up to, towards Watertown, New York, we do have some clouds in that area. Burlington actually looking pretty good, at least for now. Yeah, you know, it's you know all about timing, of course. They do have some cloud cover, you know, off to the west of Burlington, and it is heading eastward, but I think totality will happen before that cloud cover really moves in. Exactly. For the most part. Hopefully just some high, thin <laughs> clouds for you guys. Yeah, you know, in our first stop, Eagle Pass, we were just talking to them earlier, and so they are, you know, the first city in the continental U.S. to see uh, the totality happen, and in terms of when it gets going, at 229, that's when the big moment starts to happen. So, yeah, this is 229 Eastern Daylight Time, and you're going to get four minutes and 24 seconds, and really along the path of totality, Sandra, anywhere from one to four minutes, just depending on where you live. Yeah, and, you know, and then next we're going up to Waco to our friends KWTX, our local gray station there. And, you know, we have the totality there for you, and so it's not that much longer after the one for Eagle Pass. So it starts at 240 in Waco. Exactly, 240 Eastern Daylight Time, four minutes and 12 seconds you're going to get for totality there.
Deborah, Rashida? Well, today is going to be the first time for a lot of people to be able to see that solar eclipse, especially totality specifically. And not only is it going to be a great opportunity to learn, but to have fun while doing it. Yeah, I like fun. <laughs> so that's why I spoke with Mindy Thomas, co-host of the Children's Science Podcast, Wow in the World, to see how they've been helping kids and parents prepare. You have an episode called The Great Solar Eclipse Party, and you have your character is hosting a party. Tell us about this special episode and what kids can learn from it. Yeah, so one of the things that we wanted to do was to help kids understand what a huge deal the solar eclipse is. It's a, it's a huge phenomenon and what a special thing it is to be a part of. I know that a lot of our kid listeners were not even around in 2017 when we had our total solar eclipse. And uh, it'll be 2044 be before they even have a chance to see another one. So this is a huge deal. And we wanted to take a moment to, to celebrate it with our characters having a party, to explain what the solar eclipse is, why it's so important to be safe while you're experiencing it, and uh, just what makes it so, wow, it's sort of like the, the Super Bowl of science that we're about to uh, experience. I like that, the Super Bowl of science, and really it is wow. I mean, you know, adults sometimes we're busy, we're working, maybe we can't see the solar eclipse, you're somewhere, but, but really this is an amazing opportunity for kids to see science as it is working. So how do you work to tell science stories in the podcast and make it fun and interesting for families? Yeah, so for Wow in the World, we take, you know, normally real peer-reviewed scientific research, these amazing discoveries happening in our world. And I don't know if you've ever read a scientific journal, but they are so <laughs> incredibly dense. It's like a foreign <laughs> language. And so we want to make science accessible not only to all kids but to all parents as well and connect them to the wows happening in our world and we do this by breaking it down and wrapping it in a fun narrative our podcast we describe it as a cartoon for the ear because there's nothing saying that science can also be silly and fun and of course as we all know it really is amazing Absolutely. So, okay, let's talk about the solar eclipse. How would you say that families can celebrate the event? Well, first of all, if you live anywhere in the 13 states that are in the path of totality, I really hope that you are making time to get out there and experience this total solar eclipse for yourself. But, you know, if you live anywhere else, if you're even getting a partial solar eclipse, Make it a party. This is a big deal. So, you know, I don't know, pay, play Pin the Moon on the Sun or listen to our episode of Wow in the World, the Great Solar Eclipse Party to get yourself in the mood. We've got a playlist for your party. You can play, um, you know, have some, some eclipse-themed snacks. Enjoy some moon pies, some sun chips, and uh, just make it a party. This is a really big deal. What are some of the other wow-filled shows that you have coming up that kids and their grown-ups can experience on Wow in the World? Oh, we've got so many fun things, so many things happening in the world of science. We've got a story of a fish doorbell in in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, a, an inventor came up with a way to help fish swim from, uh, get past these locks by coming up with a fish doorbell and getting the public involved in helping them ring it. We've got uh, the science behind making friends. We've got a story all about uh, great white sharks and how no one has ever seen a baby great white shark. Ooh. No one's ever seen one. Where are the baby great white sharks? So this we cover intriguing. it all on Wow in the World. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm gonna listen to this. I don't have children, but I'm gonna listen to this anyway because there's so much that I still need to learn. There's so much, like you say, Wow in the World. We're all like, <laughs> yeah. Mindy Thomas, co-creator, co-host, and writer for Wow in the World. Again, the number one science podcast for kids and their grown-ups. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, happy solar eclipse and happy solar eclipse to you. You are looking at NASA's eclipse simulator. You can see the moon casting a shadow over the Earth. The eclipse's path of totality stretches roughly 4,000 miles from Mexico to Canada, hitting 15 U.S. states along the way. Yeah, and those lucky enough to witness totality could see up to four minutes and 28 seconds of darkness. Now, of course, the length of time all depends on where you are located across that path. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who are outside the path of totality, like us here in Washington, right here, DC, we may not see the halo in the sky, but we're still going to be in for a good show. For sure. Always in for a good show. And that's what's bringing us to LNL correspondent Ryan Henson, 
He is at a big solar eclipse festival on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. What is up, Ryan? <laughs> Well, Deborah, Rashida, people aren't stopping from coming out here to the National Mall just because we're not in the path of totality. We're actually going to have a cool experience. But first, talk about all things happening out here on the mall. This is Dr. Erica Jawin right here. She's going to tell us, you know, what are some of the activities out here? Why is it important to bring education on an event like this here to the mall? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to get everyone interested uh, in the eclipse, kids, grown-ups. All, all levels. And so we have the Eclipse Festival here on the National Mall today that has a whole bunch of stations of ways that you can look at the eclipse, either through a solar telescope uh, before and during the eclipse. And that's actually really exciting because the sun is currently in a period of solar maximum. So we should be able to see lots of activity on the surface of the sun, even separate from the eclipse. Uh, there's places where you can experience the eclipse in ways other than just through sight, so through sound and through touch. Um, there's a station hosted by the uh, Museum of the American Indian talking about indigenous cultures and their relations and stories about eclipses. Uh, and most importantly is that we're also giving out eclipse glasses. This is the way that you can safely look at the eclipse. Please do not stare directly at the sun without a pair of solar glasses here. Uh, and so you can get all these on the mall and then visit all of our exciting stations. Excellent advice, and we're not in the path of totality. What's our experience going to look like here? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have about 80 per, 87 percent coverage of the moon uh, on the sun, and so that means that it's going to get dark. Uh, it might get quieter. Some birds could go to sleep. It'll get cool. Um, the weather could change a little bit, uh, but we're not going to get that complete totality coverage, but it still will get dark. And if you're looking through your, your safe solar glasses, you'll still be able to see just a little sliver of sunlight around the shadow of the moon. Perfect. And real quick, when's the next time we're going to be able to see an eclipse here? So in the continental U.S., the next time that we'll have a total eclipse spanning most of the U.S. is in 2045. Perfect. So 2045, not that far away from maybe we'll catch you uh, catch up with you then and we'll be able to catch that eclipse. Well, that's all here from the National Mall. She experiences a little bit, explains some of the experiences here a little bit later. We'll get to those on my next hit. But for now, back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, Ryan. Don't forget your glasses. <laughs> I love seeing all those kids out there. Yeah. Well, right now, you're looking at our eclipse map. It shows the full path of totality. It stretches roughly 4,000 miles all the way from Mexico to Canada. It hits 15 U.S. states along the way. And those lucky enough to witness totality could see up to 4 minutes and 28 seconds. How long all depends on where you are on that map. Of course, the excitement for the eclipse, it is ramping up everywhere. You can kind of feel it yeah. as this big moment gets closer and closer. Yeah, and people in Cleveland, Ohio, are waiting with their eclipse glasses and their telescope. Yeah, WOIO's Jen Pachano is going to give us a look at what's happening there. Jen Pachano here coming to you from the path of totality here on the shore of Lake Erie in Cleveland, Ohio. I have Jay Reynolds here from the Cuyahoga Astronomical Association. This is like your Super Bowl today, isn't it? <laughs> it Jay? is just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we've been waiting for this for quite a while, obviously. Since 1806, I've been waiting. I don't know about you. <laughs> the next one will be 420 years from now. So Make it count. Make it count. Make it you count. have come with some pretty big equipment here, right? Yeah, this is actually my, one of my smallest telescopes, so it's a prop for the day. Uh -huh. So definitely having out a scope, but you really don't need that. As long as you have your solar glasses and you get outside, don't try to improvise anything, please. Right? Okay. But speaking of improvise, what do you have here? Exactly. So for people who maybe want to photograph and document this. Right. So this is very safe to improvise with. Go into your kitchen and get your kitchen colander mm -hmm. that's a screen type but look at all the uh, well machined holes here uh -huh. so as an example during the eclipse if you see all the little holes you're going to project actual eclipses right on a piece of paper like this it'll be perfect and perfectly safe to photograph with anything you have so if you see the little circles right yeah, there, right there. Okay. those are that's all the sun right That's there. All you need. So, so. What about for the novice who hasn't been studying this and sure. gearing up for this? What can they expect to see well, look today? At your pretty red jacket okay. here. The colors are going to begin to fade away a little bit, but the greens are going to pop. The reds are going to fade 
humans don't see red very well uh -huh. and so as it becomes a little darker we're going to start to see greens a little better here so also watch for the animals listen for the birds we're all going to share this including everything in nature also real quick uh -huh. in medina county uh, in 2017 mm -hmm. they noticed the snakes were coming out of the ground <gasps> oh man yeah. are you so the answer the animals may be reacting differently the, right. the the street lights may go on we also know that the temperature is going to be dropping yes. here not by a couple degrees but you know significantly yeah four or five degrees especially if there's no clouds temperature will definitely go down you'll feel it wonderful oh yeah all right so the the uh, beach and the park here on the shore of lake erie is starting to fill in people are so excited and we are ready to be in the path of totality here in northeast ohio today for now i'm jen pachado where Jen is, it looks beautiful, clear. Yeah, I don't think they'll have a problem at all, but here's the thing is, um, did you notice that gentleman had something in his hand? What was it? Dum, dum, dum. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> a colander. Yes, we were prepared. And we're going to talk more about this a little bit later in the show. You want to stick around yeah, for Yeah, so you're not just going to make spaghetti for us. No, no, you <laughs> could do that Wait a minute, with but this. is he going to make spaghetti for us? Oh. We'll have to stick around. After the show, yes, I think. You I'll don't want to go anywhere for that. <laughs> promises, promises. I know. Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be an amazing day. Well, be sure don't go anywhere as our eclipse coverage continues. You know, don't forget those glasses as well. You know, that's something that we've been talking about. You got yours handy. Got Make yours sure too, it is the ISO glasses dash one, two, three, dash one, two, dash two. If it doesn't have that number, <laughs> that means they are not certified. And you could hinder your eyesight if you don't have these uh, protective eyeglasses. She knows her stuff. Now, some of you will be leaving us, but we are live for another two hours on localnewslive.com. Yeah, that's right where we're following the path of totality across the United States. You're watching a special edition of Local News Live, The Great American Eclipse. And we're going to have a lot more coming up, right? We're going to Ohio. We are going to Niagara Falls. We are going to Erie, Pennsylvania. We are going to Indianapolis. We are going to Eagle Pass. I'm sorry. Just I'm everywhere. so excited right now. <laughs> Eagle Pass, Texas. And then again here at the National Mall with Ryan Henson. This is so much going on. And Niagara Falls. Don't forget. Up top. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Great American Eclipse. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Rethink how you get breaking news. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always streaming, always free. Hi, everyone. You're watching uh, the American Eclipse coverage here on Local News Live. We're looking at weather across the nation right now, and we're watching our path to totality very closely here from South Texas. We are seeing some clouds there, other tricky spots up in western New York State, from Watertown, including Niagara, even Erie, Pennsylvania, seeing some cloud cover right now. Conditions a little bit better up towards Burlington, Vermont, and up into northern parts of Maine. Elsewhere across the country, even though I know you're not seeing the total eclipse, you will see a partial eclipse everywhere in the lower 48 states. And one of the real problem spots is here over the upper Midwest. You see a lot of clouds and wet weather. So North Dakota, South Dakota, into Minnesota, that is a trouble spot. Even the Pacific Northwest and down along the Gulf Coast. Louisiana into Mississippi, showers and thunderstorms there. We'll also have a few tricky spots there in eastern Tennessee. Great weather, though. Just a few clouds around Atlanta, over to Columbia, South Carolina, up to Richmond. Virginia looking good as well. Even New York City up towards Boston is looking good. Reno, Las Vegas, Phoenix looking great as well. Now we're watching a system that is coming out of the southwestern states that will likely produce some severe weather a little bit later today, but we do think it will happen after dark across Texas. And there is an area of enhanced risk of potentially some tornadoes. At least a few tornadoes will be possible along with damaging straight line winds. We'll have the potential for very heavy rain. And you can see all of that nasty weather will be breaking out again, mainly after sunset tonight. So if you do have to do some traveling after the eclipse is over, keep that in mind. There may be some difficult travel later tonight into the start of the day tomorrow, especially across Texas into Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, and Oklahoma as well. We'll be dealing with some difficult conditions. Temperature-wise, across the nation, we are looking at that warm air here from Waco, where it is 80 degrees. Memphis reporting 74 
54 degrees. So that warm air heading north and east is what will help to fuel that outbreak of severe weather a bit later today across Texas into Louisiana. Up towards D.C., we have 68 degrees. Burlington, a nice cool 60 degrees right now with just a little bit of high cloud cover there. Casper, Wyoming, it's only 40 degrees. Phoenix at 67. Sarasota, Florida, Sarasota, Florida looking good there with a temperature of 82 degrees. So overall, we're looking pretty good along the path of totality. You are watching live coverage of the Great American Eclipse on Local News Live. spectacular it is two o'clock on the east coast i'm so excited yeah. welcome to this special edition of local news live the great american eclipse i'm deborah alfarone thanks so much for joining us i'm rashida kaba right now all eyes are looking up to the skies as millions of americans prepare for the great american solar eclipse now this happens when the moon passes between the sun and the earth blocking out all daylight and we'll see what's called a diamond ring in less than 30 minutes, the sky will go dark in Texas, almost as if it were night. The eclipse will travel through 15 states. Its last U.S. stop is Maine. And, of course, we're going to make sure that you get to see it. Everything. Yeah, we're taking you along for the journey across the country. We have local reporters along the path of totality from our network of gray television stations. They'll be showing us how communities are prepping for this phenomenon, all the way from festivals to viewing parties, concerts and more. Plus, senior national correspondent Peter Zampa is live for us in Niagara Falls. LNL's Molly Martinez live from Erie, Pennsylvania. And Ryan Henson joining us live from a solar eclipse celebration in the nation's capital. Talk about a fun packed show. But first, mm -hmm. LNL meteorologist Sandra Brogan and WWBT meteorologist Ross Runner are giving us a look at the forecast. That's right. Yeah, we are seeing the cloud cover. And also, Ross talked about that threat for severe weather earlier. We're already mm -hmm. seeing some thunderstorms. But the good news is, is that that is outside of the path of totality. You know, not so great news for those that are still hoping to see a glimpse of that partial eclipse just outside of that. Uh, but, you know, for the totality path, it looks as though the severe weather may hold off. I'll tell you what, we've really lucked out here today, Sandra. It looks like great weather. Now, we do have some cloud cover in South Texas, so down around Eagle Pass where the eclipse is underway down there. We do have some cloud cover. You get a little farther to the north and east, a mix of clouds and sunshine around Tyler and Bryan, Texas. And then once we come up into parts of Arkansas and especially southeastern Missouri, we're seeing a lot of blue sky and sunshine there. So some great viewing across Missouri. And Sandra, things are looking really good even up into Indiana and western Ohio right now. Yeah, I think we're going to be stopping in at the Speedway in Indianapolis. So some great conditions for them there. But we do have that potential for some cloud cloud cover. Now it's cleared out for Cleveland, but we're going to see that potential for some cloud cover working its way across Erie and also into portions of Watertown and also or areas around Watertown mm -hmm. and also up towards Burlington, Vermont. But I think, you know, the clouds may hold off just before yeah. they get into Burlington, Vermont during the time of their totality. But in terms of that severe weather, it looks as though the timing will actually hold off until after uh, areas in Texas reach totality. So some good news there. Unfortunately, bad news as they're hitting those yeah. roads and heading back home. Yeah, exactly right. It does look like the timing for this outbreak of severe weather will be after sunset tonight. So well after the eclipse has already passed. However, again, as you mentioned, Sandra, if you're doing some traveling later this evening, a lot of folks will be traveling across North Texas back into Louisiana along I-20. You want to watch out for that potential for thunderstorms that could produce severe weather, tornadoes, damaging straight line winds, hail, and even very heavy, ra heavy rain. So have a way to get your warning. Yeah, you know, and our local gray station, KWTX, if they have any storms in their area, of course, they're going to be covering it. And if you have any severe weather in your area, of course, you can tune to them for the latest updates, county by county forecast. Also, download uh, their weather app, and, and that way you can stay mm -hmm. alert for, you know, whenever you're on those roadways. Hopefully, you'll be home by then, by the exactly time of those storms. Right. But uh, it looks like some areas may have to deal with some strong storms as we head into later today. Now, temperature-wise, not mm -hmm. too bad in a lot of areas. It's looking really Really good here. In fact, you see that warmth starting to head north through Texas up into the Mississippi Valley. 
That's why we're going to get that outbreak of severe weather, that clash of air masses coming in from the Rockies into the southern plains will help to produce some of those stronger storms yeah, later on. You can see a difference in the air masses, you know, 40s, Colorado Springs, 67, Lubbock, but we've got 80 in Waco. I know, looking really good there. Louisville, Kentucky, you're at 76 degrees right now and looking good up through the Great Lakes, even warm for them. Deborah. Thank you so much. Well, here's a fun fact for everyone. Total solar eclipses can cause changes in the weather. Experts say it's all caused by the loss of solar radiation. So if you're watching outside, you could feel a noticeable drop in the temperature. You might also notice a decrease in the wind and the cloud cover. Before, Sandra was talking about Indianapolis, oh, yeah? the Motor Speedway hot spot. That's a big hot spot to watch the Great American Eclipse. They're having a blast mm -hmm. out there. Race cars and Indy 500 drivers, generally, they're the stars of the show, but today, it's the actual stars and cosmos themselves. Yeah. Big, big party. Thousands of people in attendance. Mm -hmm. This may be the hugest show of all. I think so. And that's where we find WNDU's Joshua Short. He is there. Josh, give us a sense of what the environment is like. It looks like you're having a good time out there. We're having a great time out here. Let me underscore what you guys just said. Hot spot. It is hot out here. I had to take off the coat, but it is a great time nonetheless. I want to step out of the way and show you thousands have descended upon IMS, what is known as, of course, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is the path of totality. We are set to experience complete totality. We are going to see nothing in just about an hour's time. In fact, Technically, the eclipse has already started. I'm going to put on my glasses here. I want to do this safely and look up. You can begin to see the moon beginning, just only starting to eclipse the sun. This is major, especially for folks coming here. I'm just going to say this. We've got national news outlets here. I'm not far from another news outlet. LNL is also on the ground here. The point is this. This is the center of the cosmic universe today. This is normally the center of the racing world. That's not the case today. So, so many people are excited. So many people are anticipating this. They've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. We've been here since 4 o'clock. I kissed the bricks. If you are familiar with Indy 500, you know that's a big deal. That was not on my bucket list at all, guys. We're really excited today. I mean, this is a bucket list for everyone. It really right? is. I mean, you are having a, I wish. I kind of wish we were there. No, it's really cool <laughs> to be here, but you are having the best time. <laughs> What's the weather like specifically? You said it was yes, hot. But you have to. Yeah, well, maybe we'll come out there. I don't know. Maybe we can get out yeah, there Yes, too. it is. It is really hot. <laughs> you know, you, we'll, we'll come on through. We'll have some fun. That'll be, it'll be a great time. I will say, you know what? It is hot right now. The air temperature is just about 67 degrees. We're expected to get into the upper 70s, but that can fall at any point, specifically during that totality. You just talked about it, and I don't think that's what people are prepared for. I got my jacket on standby, but I had to take it off because it is getting out out here uh, pretty quickly. Obviously, a lot more people um, have joined me since the last time I joined you all. Thousands of people expected to be here, about 50,000 just north of that. Now, to put this in perspective, on average, we're talking 330,000 people for the big race on Memorial Day weekend. That's what usually happens here. So IMS and officials here, Doug Bowles, the president of the track says they are more than prepared. They have been preparing for this moment since 2017. This is a big moment, and this is the center of the celestial uh, universe right now. Well, we'll definitely be checking back in with you when it's closer to totality. Make sure you get those glasses and put them on, Josh. Have a good time out there. You know, also, it's one of the four official NASA broadcast sites. It's huge. It really is. Well, this is going to be the last total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. until 2044, so 20 years. That eclipse will start in Greenland, pass through Canada, and then hit only three states here in the U.S., Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. But let's talk about today's main event. Let's do that, shall we? Let's bring in Sandra and Ross, because we need to know about the viewing conditions, because... I mean, Texas is going to be the first place to right. experience the eclipse, and I'm wondering, I see a little cloud out there. I don't know how I feel <laughs> about this. Yeah. What do you got, Sandra? Well, you know, in, in Eagle Pass, you know, we were with them earlier, and they were talking about it being windy, and hopefully that will help to mix up the atmosphere, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, uh, you know, cause some breaks in the cloud cover. But, you know, and they did see they were seeing some glimpses of, you know, when they could see up in, you know, the sun. But but for the most part, we do have some clouds that will be in and out, unfortunately. We do. We you know, all it takes is one break of the clouds. You've got yeah. a little bit over four minutes of totality. So we get just a couple of breaks during that time. You'll be able to get a glimpse of that eclipse. Just 
just an, an amazing show. Yeah, you know, once in a lifetime event, but we do have some rain outside of the path of totality, so at least that's not, mm -hmm. you know, farther westward. But, you know, we're going to be heading northward to Waco. It's looking pretty good, right? I'll tell you, and look at all these areas in between. Waco, Hillsboro, Nemo, if you live in that area, you're looking good right now. Skies are mainly clear, maybe just a few clouds. Yeah, you know, and even as we head northward up towards Tyler, clouds may be uh, in and out for the mm -hmm. most part. And also notice that Tyler is kind of on the edge of the path of totality, so their duration of totality is not going to be quite as long as when they're in the center where they're getting like around four minutes on average. But again, as we head north, we've got some really wow, good conditions. Wow, this is fantastic. Jonesboro is looking really good. Those of you in southeastern Missouri, around Cape Girardeau, we've yep. had a report from Poplar Bluff, mm -hmm. looking really, really good in that part of the country with lots of blue sky and sunshine, and that's really going to give you an amazing, amazing effect. Yeah, you know, in a lot of areas, I have to say, you know, there's a few areas that, you know, maybe a few trouble spots in terms of cloud cover, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, with any thunderstorms, I think that's going to hold off for the most part until those areas see totality. But again, we do have some cloud cover up towards the northeast. Mm -hmm. We'll have more on that in a few minutes. Exactly right. And we will be heading to Texas, but first, let's head on over to Pennsylvania to check in with our Molly Martinez. She is live from Erie, Pennsylvania. Hey, Molly, you're about an hour out from totality. Uh, it sounds a little busy out there. Hey, Deborah and Rashida. Yes, it is. We are at Mercyhurst University in Erie, Pennsylvania, and this doesn't really look like an eclipse viewing party. It kind of looks like a homecoming game, but we have the whole university out here. We are on the football field. You can see we're going to pan around here. A lot of people are so excited for this. I just took a peek through my glasses. Of course, don't look directly at the sun. I'm sure we've been over that many times. But we're starting to see a little bit of the clipping of the moon. This is a gradual process. This is going to take about two and a half hours in total. It goes by degrees. So the totality itself is going to last about four minutes, but the entire process is much longer than that and it gets dimmer by degrees. Now we are very lucky here in Erie because we have with us Professor Nick Lang. He is not only a professor of geology here at Mercyhurst, he also works for NASA. So we're getting a two for one. We're really getting our money's worth out of you, Nick. <laughs> we talked earlier and you were talking about how there's so much excitement around this yeah. for science. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, right. So no, the two of the things we're trying to get across here is safety uh, for the eclipse and then just how the eclipses work. What, how, what do, what do people expect to see and, you know, why do eclipses happen? And then also, you know, tied into that is this activation, how people can be activated to do science themselves and just, you know, recording the temperature change, right? We're starting to feel a little bit of temperature change. We're going to see that increase as we go through uh, the, the process here. Uh, the darkness, you, you alluded to the darkness, right? It's going to start getting darker and darker and we're starting to see the clouds dissipate. And you might see that even more as we get closer to totality here. So and those are all observations that people can make at our booth here for the NASA booth we have here at Mercyhurst. We have um, you know, recording the temperature versus time like just to show people that, hey, yeah, you can do science. This is accessible for everybody here. Nick, I'm seeing a lot of children here today. How encouraging is it to see this younger generation get this sort of once in a lifetime experience, get to experience it firsthand and take them with that through their whole life? It, it's incredible. You know, I've been hearing a lot of stories from people. You know, we've been doing presentations around town. I've got colleagues who've been doing presentations around the country. And, you know, one thing, the things that their stories we're hearing is like, when I, when I was a kid, I, I saw this eclipse and it was just absolutely changed everything for me. And so that's, we're hoping that people have the same experience. And, you know, I've been talking with lots of, lots of kids at uh, presentations at the Erie County libraries, you know, who just were like so, so excited wearing their eclipse earrings, you know, their eclipse shirts. And so it's so, it, it really kind of gets at our, one of the core things we're trying to do here, which is get people excited about science, get kids excited. And we're hoping that by doing this, that they can, this will catapult them to continue down that line. All right. Well, Nick, thank you so much. And uh, you got a bunch of fun activities yes. here. I know you have your hands full for the next two hours. Thank you so much for having us here at Mercyhurst University. No problem. Hey, no, my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here and, and uh, talking with us today. You know, don't stop looking up, right? We have your glasses. Wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Oh, you can see it right now happening. Yep, that's awesome. So thanks very much. Thank you so much. Like I said, we are going to be here all day. Coming up in our next hit, we're going to be looking at what ancient civilizations thought was happening during the eclipse before we understood the science behind it. A lot of them thought it was a bad omen, some really interesting stuff. We're going to talk to another professor here at Mercyhurst University about that. But for now, I'm going to send it all back to you. Molly Martinez always bringing us that live energy from yes. Erie, Pennsylvania. We'll see you soon, Molly. Our next stop is to Waco, Texas. We're going to join in with our coverage, the four coverage from our team at KWTX.
away from the sun. The third contact phase is much like second contact, but now in reverse. So just like you had the chance to get a look at the diamond ring, bailey beads, and shadow bands, you'll be able to witness those things once again. Finally, the last stage of the eclipse will occur as the moon completely leaves the face of the sun. As the full disk of the sun reappears, the eclipse will officially be over. Uh, do we have to talk on TV? Or I know, right? Can, can we just like just yeah. the whole we, time? Just we keep like forgetting it. every time we look up, I can't see anything. Uh, it's awesome out here, I'd say. You've got to get outside. Part of what makes an eclipse so incredible to watch is the impact that it has on the world around you. Again, we already talked about stuff we're hearing. But one of the stranger impacts is what impacts it has on your animals. So that's why staff at the Cameron Park Zoo in Waco will be closely watching its animals. News 10's Isabella Quintanilla reports. In 2017, North Carolina State University did a research study on animal behavior during the total solar eclipse. They found that approximately 75% of the animals studied had a notable reaction, but why? When it comes to the question of how do animals react during an eclipse, you know, it, it, it's helpful to think about what actually happens during that eclipse time. When those bodies are perfectly aligned and the moon is right in front of the sun, covering the disk of the sun, it will get dark. We also have a change in temperature. Maybe pressure might change as well. The direction of the wind can change and influence how nature would respond to a totality. A lot of this strange behavior is simply animals switching from their day to nighttime routines. The animals will perceive the total solar eclipse as if it would be the sunset or the sunrise. So for nocturnal animals, they're probably going to wake up and say it's time to go by my day. Cameron Park Zoo in Waco is home to more than 1,700 animals and 300 different species. On the day of the eclipse, they will remain open, but around the time of totality, their staff will be closely observing the animals in case they have a reaction to the event. We are curious to know if that will happen, and we'll be there to help our animals through it, per se, if any of them get confused. Every animal reacts differently, which is part of what makes this phenomenon so unique. And if you want to witness this, just take a look at your own pet. I think it would be a fun exercise and a fun experiment for the kids to bring the puppies outside and the animals outside and look at their behaviors and observe what they are doing. Um, experience the eclipse, learn, and have a great time. Oh man, I tell you, really cool. Just all the different kind of angles of this eclipse again, a once in a lifetime. But we've been standing out here. It's kind of like it's, I don't know, it's an odd, it, you, it you don't feel this kind of light any other time where it's Think getting about it, it's darker. 115. I know, it, but it's not like the sun's setting. It's just you're losing about two thirds of the light coming from the sun right now. And uh, you may be experiencing this once in a lifetime event with friends or family. NASA has a few program, or programs that you can actually participate during the total solar eclipse. Uh, here's how you can help. Now, NASA has several projects that you can actually get involved with as well. Globe Observer is the first one, and that is a way to actually track what the temperature and the cloud coverage is at your location to report that out and help us to understand how the eclipse impacts weather that we experience here on Earth. Now, SunSketcher is another project that NASA is offering where you can actually help us to determine kind of the shape and the size of the sun during the eclipse as well. And then finally, soundscapes. So sounds change during the eclipse. And what I mean by that is that wildlife and nature around you may change. And so you have the opportunity to really help us to understand what those sounds are that you're experiencing, whether birds kind of start to nest and, and chirp and go in, if the crickets come out as well. Got to pay attention to everything around us. Paying attention to the roads here, things continue to be nice and clear. But whether there's traffic or not, TxDOT is warning drivers not to stop on the side of the highway. And you were just listening to live coverage from our station KWTX. We have Texas covered. Yeah, we sure do. One of the first places in the entire country to see totality. That is happening very soon. Yeah, we're going to take you to Eagle Pass, Texas, where we find KGNS reporter Lisa Lee Garza. And she is live now with us. Lisa, it looks like uh, things are switching up a little bit behind you in your background from the last time we saw you. Uh, what are you experiencing out there? Yes, definitely a total change, right? Heat wave, as y'all can see, it is much darker. We had to put up a light 
So y'all can see it's a little bit clear. People are, people are all looking up at the sky right now. It is super cloudy. We have been getting some breaks in the clouds. Right, heat wave, um, we have been seeing the moon go in front of the sun. It is very exciting. We're in Chile. eight minutes, 43 seconds away. It's total in Torreon right now at uh, 123. It will be total in Monclova and then here a little bit after 127. And uh, the temperatures come down just a little bit. And now that we don't have the air rising as much, some of these low clouds are actually starting to fade away. Uh, what's making the sun a little dim is we have a deck of high, thin cirrus clouds. Thin enough, we're, we're able to see the sun. Heat wave, and I know it is just a tad bit chillier. Um, have we seen maybe a change in temperature? When will we, when will we be able to know that change? Well, with the uh, cloud deck that we had, it didn't warm up a whole lot and it's windy so the air is being mixed a lot so i don't think we'll see a big temperature drop but it's come down a couple of degrees from where we were a half hour ago all right and then just a little bit about what we're seeing everyone is just looking up at the sky hoping they see the eclipse it is really cloudy out there so hopefully we get some breaks in the clouds before we hit totality right now we're next to the lake maverick county lake Heat yeah. wave. Seven and a half minutes and it's getting darker, but it will get dark very quickly from the southwest in the last uh, uh, 30 seconds or so. This shadow is moving at 1600 miles an hour. Very fast, which is also causing some type of impact on the wildlife here at the lake. We do see that some ducks, they look like they're sleeping and they're hiding in the brush everything seems to be very calm and windy very quiet heat wave very different than what it was a couple hours ago everyone was really loud very excited but everything seems a little bit different i think we'll see even more excitement <laughs> in another six minutes and 46 seconds oh yes heat wave so we will definitely be bringing you this coverage again eagle pass is the first city in the united states to experience the full totality here along the path so that is very important there has been people from all over the world that have been coming to visit heatwave we spoke to some people from germany jerusalem even people from laredo which is a drive eagle pass is a border town with a little bit over twenty-eight thousand people pennsylvania so, sacramento california oh yeah people flock to see the sun go to totality for the first location in the U.S. Very exciting. Four minutes and 32 seconds, is that correct, heat wave yeah, for the a, totality? A, a 424, four minutes, 24 seconds, and we reach totality in five minutes, 57 seconds. So the countdown is definitely on. Everyone is super excited. All the ducks are asleep, but we'll be keeping an eye on this eclipse with our safeware. That's all we have, right, Heatwave? Yeah, we'll toss it back. Monclova goes total in about a minute and a half. All right, we'll keep you all in touch. He's tracking it minute by minute. I love it, and I love exactly. to see the change. I mean, my gosh, it really does look like it's evening time right there. The ducks are in the brush. The ducks in the brush. <laughs> that, that's all it says for you. That was Lisa Lee Garza and, of course, Chief Meteorologist Richard Burler from our station KGNS in Eagle Pass, Texas, the first place in the U.S. to reach totality. You're looking at our eclipse map. It shows the full path of totality, stretching roughly 4,000 miles from Mexico to Canada, hitting 15 U.S. states along the way. Now, those lucky enough to witness totality could see up to 4 minutes and 28 seconds of darkness. The length of time depends on where you are. Lucky guys out there in Waco, Texas, that we just saw 4 minutes and 24 seconds, they said. Mm. There is a lot to know about the Great American Eclipse. Deborah, I know you were able to go to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. What'd you learn over she knows, there? She knows where I'm at. <laughs> so I sat down with uh, Marielle O'Brien, and she teaches people about the planets. That's her whole job. It's mm -hmm. fascinating. So listen to this. It's uh, the Super Bowl, the World Series, the, the Stanley Cup kind of everything in one. Marielle O'Brien fell in love with space at age six when she looked through her first telescope. Now she's an astronomy educator. Here are the top five things she told me about the great American eclipse. What is a solar eclipse? So a solar eclipse occurs when the Earth, the moon and the sun all line up so that the uh, moon blocks out the sun for a short period of time in the sky. Now the moon is much smaller than the sun, of course, so it's about 
400 times in diameter smaller than the sun, but its sun is also about 400 times further away. So we have this cosmic coincidence where they take up the same amount of space in the sky. If you don't live in the path of totality, can you see anything? You absolutely can. But here the maximum eclipse will happen at 3.20 p.m. will be about 89% covered. 31 million people live in what's called the path of totality, meaning they'll experience the total eclipse. The rest of the country will see a partial eclipse. It all depends on where you're at. Next, how rare are eclipses? We actually have solar eclipses somewhere about 2.3 times per year. However, they're not all total and also they often happen over uninhabited areas such as ocean. They're not actually rare, but, um, but it's rare to see one where you live. How long will this last? This one will be almost four minutes. Uh, so sometimes the moon is closer to us, sometimes it's further away. So we're lucky that this eclipse is at a time when the moon is a little bit closer to us on Earth, and so it takes longer to cover the sun. And what makes an eclipse so special? It's a very uh, moving experience because you see the eclipse, you feel it get cold and maybe crickets chirping if it's, it's the right season. Uh, you, you feel the wind pick up. You, you see stars in the sky that you wouldn't see in the daytime. So you really have this multi-sensory experience. Before we leave one of the world's most popular museums, we have to show you why so many people make this a must-see when they come to D.C. We saw the spacesuit Neil Armstrong wore when we took one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind on the moon. And sometimes visitors will ask us, is this uh, model, this can't be real, but this is actually real. We checked out lunar roving vehicles, parts of the actual rockets used to launch astronauts into space, and we even got a feel for what it'd be like in Armstrong's moon boots by virtually visiting the moon. I just loved going there. If you haven't been to that museum, it is right. one of the most visited museums in the entire country. But you guys can't see much about this museum or <laughs> anything, can you here? <laughs> can't see you at all, which Where is the point. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, that's the point, right, Sandra? We, we shouldn't be able to see Rashida and Deborah right now, which we cannot. That means you got the certified glasses. Yes, yeah, so it has an ISO on it, the 12311212. <laughs> Right, we, I need my eyeglasses. <laughs> and you need to keep them on the whole time. That's very, very yeah. important. Keep, you only get one pair of eyes. And I know it's the people who are in the path of totality, they can take those glasses off as totality is happening, right? If, you know, it depends on your, what your preference is. But we encourage you to keep them on okay. uh, the whole time if at all possible. Yeah, you know, and I did hear a story about a lady who had faulty glasses, Ooh. and so she ended up looking at the sun too long, and she ended up getting eye damage. So you need to make sure- I you don't like that. Stuff. Better safe than sorry. Ooh, yeah. well don't go anywhere. We are here with the Great American Eclipse. We'll see you in a minute. Rethink how you get breaking news. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always streaming, always free. You are watching the Great American Eclipse, and we've got your weather for you. Now, we are showing that we do have some cloud cover in southeastern Texas. We're also watching this same area for the potential for severe weather as we head into later today. In fact, it looks as though for those in the path of totality, it may not get going until after totality in areas of Texas. So some good news there, although you do need to stay weather aware when you start to hit those roadways and heading back home or wherever you want to be after uh, experiencing the eclipse. But again, we are seeing that path of totality stretching from Texas all the way up into portions of Missouri, uh, Indiana, Ohio, and up towards New York, and also up towards Vermont and Maine. So we are seeing areas dealing even with a little bit of rain and snow mixed in there for the Dakotas. Also quite a bit of cloud cover, unfortunately, uh, for the uh, upper Midwest and also stretching over into portions of Montana. Uh, you know, they were going to see a partial eclipse, but unfortunately it looks like their viewing conditions are not looking the best. Now we are seeing if you are going to be watching the partial eclipse, which is still fun, uh, you know, Ross and I are going to have some ways that you can make a pinhole projector uh, later on in this show, and that way you can see little sun crescents on the ground. So, you know, we'll have that for you in just a moment. You can still see that the partial eclipse, but we do have some showers stretching from portions of Louisiana up through Kentucky, but we are going to see that potential for some cloud cover as we start to work our way towards Erie, Pennsylvania, and also into Watertown, New York, for those in the path of totality. Also seeing some moisture working its way on shore of 
uh, Oregon and also the state of Washington. But again, more about that severe weather threat. But I think we're not going to have to really be too concerned with it until later today after uh, many areas in Texas have already experienced totality. So some good news, but you will have to stay weather aware because we do have that potential for strong to severe thunderstorms as we get into the late afternoon and into the evening. Now, what we are anticipating with any storm in these areas that does become severe, we can't completely rule out that some of these storms could have rotation. So that's why you need to be very careful and just, you know, stay alert with any weather going on in your area. We're also looking at the potential for some large hail, possibly up to the size of golf balls. And then we're also seeing the potential for some strong, damaging straight line winds. Now, where you see the orange shading, which includes Dallas, that's a level three out of five. Where you see the yellow shading, that's a level two out of five. And where you see the green shading, that's a level one, where we could see one or two storms becoming severe. 74 right now in Memphis, 80 degrees currently in Waco, so quite warm there. And 71 in Lansing, so that's pretty warm for the Great Lakes area. 68 in D.C. Looking at 60 in Burlington, 49 in Colorado Springs, and 64 in Las Vegas. You're watching the Great American Eclipse. Welcome to this special edition of Local News Live, the great, great American Eclipse. I'm Deborah Alfarone. A little I'm, bit too crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're having happy a good about time it. over here. We're all excited about yes. it. Yes. And I'm Rashida Kaba. For those of you just joining us, we are following the path of totality all across the United States. It's incredible. You're looking right now at Eagle Pass, Texas. Is that in, in, That's amazing. They have reached totality. You can see it now with our NASA cam. Look at that site. Let's go ahead and bring in KGNS reporter, reporter Lisa Lee Garza. She joins us live from Eagle Pass, Texas. Lisa Lee, it is dark out there. Wow. What does it feel like? Yep, it is very dark out there. Well, right now it is really chilly and everyone is very excited. Heat Wave was actually doing the countdown heat wave. Can you talk to us about that? Everyone's so excited. Yeah, in fact, I'll announce to the crowd one more minute left, one left. <laughs> Uh, we can actually start to see the sky lighten up to the southwest. It's still uh, 55 seconds to go, but you can already see the clearing. But the uh, last half minute or so, the darkness just rolled in very quickly. Very and quickly. we got a nice view of Venus at about 4 o'clock uh, on a clock dial from where the moon was, which was re really neat. <laughs> Eve is really excited, and all of us here in Eagle Pass at Maverick Lake is very excited. Now, we do see that it is a fairly quiet out here, Heat Wave. The, some of the animals are, they appear to be asleep. Everything seems to be quiet. It feels like nighttime, but that will quickly change, right, Heat Wave? Yeah, it will. In uh, 10 seconds, the sun will start to emerge again. And you can see how, the, how it's already starting to lighten up. Uh, the animals may have gone quiet, but the humans certainly made a racket. <laughs> oh, yes. We were very excited. Heat Wave, you really pumped us up with the whole countdown. As y'all can see, it is starting to be yeah. light out here, Heat Wave. Yeah, it's no, uh, the clouds are okay, hiding guys. the sun, but the, uh, it's no longer total where we are. That's right. And as you can see... Light is just pouring into Eagle Pass. How long was totality heat wave? Four minutes and 24 seconds. One of the longest total solar eclipse here in the United States in the path of totality. As y'all can hear, people are clapping and the light is out heat wave. That was super fast. That Very cool. It was really cool. I didn't measure a big temperature drop. It came <laughs> down from 79 and change to about 77 and again that was due to the wind mixing the air up a lot and a cloud cover where you didn't have a chance to warm up before it, it went total and then today it was a little bit more humid and it was cloudy out there at the beginning we weren't getting to see a lot of the sun but we were definitely able to see the change in the colors in the sky yeah and I, i'm just so glad that we got a few breaks in the clouds it was always a concern but we were holding out hope and we got lucky 
That was a perfect heat wave. What did you think of it? This is your second eclipse, right? Yeah, the other one was in 1979 when I worked in Duluth, Minnesota. I drove to Winnipeg, Manitoba, and there it was kind of cool because it was bright and sunny, uh, and we were looking out over the prairie, so instead of just seeing the darkness in the sky roll in, you could actually see the shadow on the prairies on the plains racing across the ground towards <laughs> All right, thank you, Heat Wave. That was it for us here in Eagle Pass with a total solar eclipse. Of course, we will have a wrap here in a couple more minutes. So we'll toss it back to you. Just hey, he is the show. I just <laughs> love the way he counted us down, counted us in. And to see that happen live, it went from dark to light, back to dark and, and light. And then, you know, Sandra had said that people become in awe yeah. of this amazing phenomenon. I will say that I was speechless for the first time in my life. <laughs> hey, I mean, it was amazing. And all this fun is going to continue because our next stop is to Waco, Texas. The city is now fully in the moon's shadow. So let's go ahead and join in on the coverage from our team, KWTX. Okay, anyways, we gotta, we gotta wrap so that we can get on with totality. Live in Hillsboro, Alec at the bar, KWTX News 10. All right. Oh man, I, I tell you, we're just, it's, it's funny, all, you don't see them all on here, but all of our employees, or a majority of them are getting out here. Here in just a few minutes, we're gonna take the shot that you see in the uh, corner full there. Now, that shot's black right now because we have one little cloud. We're hoping that it'll get out of the way, uh, and we're what? Four or five minutes. Yeah, four minutes. minutes. Four minutes in the Waco area, so less than that uh, in Lampasas areas to the southwest. The path will pass from southwest to northeast as we uh, go throughout. It's the, getting, the day. It's it is getting, getting dark. a lot darker. It's yeah. getting a lot darker. This is so so amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll actually take a look at our totality map right now, just to give you guys one last look of the times that mm. everything is uh, playing out here for today. Again, about 1:38 uh, in Waco. The further northeast you travel, a little bit later, our southwestern county is already so uh, ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Lampasas it's just Atlanta just got into uh, yeah, Lampasas in the next minute. The next minute, right? yeah, yeah, probably so, 30 seconds. Uh, we're going to take this shot full here in just a second, and you're just going to hear me and Jillian kind of talk over it and. Uh, if you weren't out and about and you're, you, we, we advise if you want, just get in, go to our YouTube page, search degree. And we'll talk about what we're seeing to explain, really if you got kids and they hadn't had a chance to see what's going on because we're gonna explain some of these little things. So right now you still need the glasses on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the last little sliver there. So one cool thing, particularly if you're more on the outer edges of the uh, eclipse path, the to to total eclipse path, you'll have a chance to see what's called Bailey beads. So if you think of the moon, you think it's round, but there's craters, valleys in it. So the last few little bits of light will start moving through those outer edges and it's gonna cause little bright spots along the edge of the moon or the sun. So that's called the Bailey beads. It was a scientist, last name Bailey, that discovered it. After that, once it gets to the last little deep spot of the moon, there on the outer parts of the moon, there's gonna be one bright blast of light move through that's called the diamond ring. You'll start to see the corona around the edges, and then you'll see that bright blast. It's getting close to that point. Yes. Now, we still got a little bit. Um, then once you see the diamond ring, or if you're looking with your solar glasses, you can't see anything uh, other than a cloud, um, that's when you can take off your glasses. You've got roughly four minutes. Again, right now, if you're watching in Lampasas, areas like that, Oh my goodness. I know, this is um, this is incredible. So you're gonna hear us just kind of take this in. Well, look at all, so I, I know we have that full shot up, but uh, the lights in our parking lot started to come on, like where we usually park the cars, all yes. those lights are coming yeah. on too, so. Yeah, wow. so you, yeah, you wanna be as far away from lights as you can, but yeah, the- Incredible. Just taking in the, yeah, <laughs> the birds are kind of oddly taking it in, but yeah, so we are still in the Waco area, not quite to totality. Again, you want to look on that left side of where the, the sun's little outer part of the sun is. That's where those Bailey beads will start to appear. Now, once it goes into totality, and if you're in an area where the skies are clear enough, if you look to the right of the moon, the bright spot there uh, is going to be Venus. You'll be able to see Venus, Saturn, and Mars yes. to the right of the moon. To the left of the moon is Jupiter. Now, it to between Jupiter and the moon, you've got the chance of seeing a comet. Now the clouds may restrict that some, but there's a comet called the Pons Brooks Comet uh, that will have the possibility. And again, we are oh, now wow. in totality across parts of Central Texas, and you're gonna have the Shadow chance. Shadow bands on, yeah. the, on the ground. Yes, oh yeah. <laughs> wow, that is so uh, cool. So yeah, right here, we're getting close to the potential where you may be able to see the Bailey beads. 
and then that uh, diamond ring effect will go. You still want to keep your glasses on right now. Uh, that there's still enough. You, you don't think there's a lot of sunlight, but enough, enough that could to cause issues. Wow. So this we're getting is to so the point where incredible. the corona should start to show up. You may notice the low clouds going away gradually. Oh, the corona's starting to appear. Oh, All right, so beautiful. here comes the diamond ring effect. Should be right. Right about now. We can hear people cheering oh, on the other wow. parking lots. Oh, my goodness. How incredible oh is God. that? Wow. Okay, so to the right, to oh, the right man. of, you're not going to see it on the TV if you're outside, that bright dot to the right, that is uh, Venus. If you look off to the left, about twice as so far away, that is uh, Jupiter. Somewhere between Jupiter and the sun, closer to Jupiter than the sun, you may get the chance to see the comet Pons Brooks comet. I don't see it from where we're looking right now. Um, wow, but look at the, I mean, so you think to the left with yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah, that would so be it Jupiter? Be just okay. on the right of. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. So this again, is... folks, if you can get outside, we'll talk you through this, but. Take it in. We like... have uh, most of us lucky enough to see this. And what you're seeing in the wispy, oh, now you see some little brightness there, uh, kind of on the bottom part of the sun there. You may well see it. That's a little bit of a solar flare going on oh, there. Oh, yes. So the wispy outside part is what's called the corona. That is the outer atmosphere of the sun, something you cannot see on Earth if a total eclipse isn't ongoing. So that is the kind of the plasma shooting away from the sun, and we are lucky enough to get the chance to see this. Wow. I, I don't even think I have any more words no, in my I, vocabulary right know, now. Just wow. Uh, and you can notice it feels cooler. It does feel The cool. winds have died down. I mean, it, like, just to remind everybody, it is 1.39 in the, like, the middle of the day. And it looks like this outside. Like, oh, it, it just, just incredible. Yeah. Wow. And if you're on a higher spot, now the clouds may block it some, but it will look a little bit like a 360 degree sunset. So, um. This is truly incredible. Now, what we will, if, you, if you're in area with clouds, you'll start to see eventually the shadow line move back across the sky. Um, but again, if you're looking, what we can see from our studio to the right of the moon, that is Venus. To the left, a little farther away, what looks like a star, that is Jupiter. And can't see the comet. Some folks that maybe have uh, binoculars may be able to see it, but um, that is the, the amazing view. Yeah, it feels like it's dusk right now in Central Texas. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, man. It, 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 it was really cool to even see the, the colors of the, ch uh, the clouds change. Wow. Was that something? No, it was nope. something on the TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were seeing something. So, again, we are in the midst of totality right now. Um, the amazing thing with this solar eclipse compared to 2017, this is a very much above average length of time uh, that many areas of Central Texas, four minutes or longer in the path of totality. You were just watching live coverage, <laughs> incredible live coverage from KWTX. Yeah, to be able to go alongside them was Ooh. just amazing and get their actual emotional reaction. A lot of wows, and I was right there with them. <laughs> Our next stop, Tyler, Texas. KLTV's Lane Lucky is live for us there. Lane, what is going on behind you? Oh, good afternoon. It really is starting to get exciting here. It's uh, just almost a childlike innocence about this. The oohs and ahs coming from young and old and everyone in between. We really are just now starting to hit totality. Uh, it all of a sudden has just become very dim. I, I, I have chills right now, honestly. I was not expecting that. As you've heard from our other sister stations here in Texas, you feel the dip in temperature as well. And, and the dim is just almost alarming, uh, the darkness here. Now this is Tyler, Texas. We are the rose capital of America and we've been waiting to see whether the weather was gonna be a thorn in the side of all of these eclipse watchers. Wow. And you can hear all of the excitement and it does look like the weather has cooperated. We've had clouds all afternoon and there have been dips, but just at the moment of totality, the sliver of the sun is now appearing and people are in awe here. 
You know, Texas was considered to be the place to be in the U.S. to witness the eclipse because, of course, the Lone Star State will see the longest duration of totality. And we are in it as we speak. We generally have really favorable weather, so this was a surprise today. You can actually see the street lights here in downtown Tyler coming on. Uh, it really feels like nighttime right now. Wow. Okay, now it is safe uh, to be able to view with the naked eye. You're able to see the corona in the sky of the sun through the clouds. Wow, just at the last second here. Mother Nature has delivered for us. Some interesting things going on here. Some of the neat people who have come from all over the country to take this in. Just a really unique story. Of all of the places that visitors could have chosen to watch the eclipse, many are here in the city of Tyler for a somewhat unusual reason. We've been in touch with several people named Tyler who are here for that reason alone. <laughs> Some coming all the way from Alberta, Canada, even Hawaii. So people named Tyler decided to come to Tyler to see the eclipse. Clearly, they're less interested in whether the weather is going to work out or not, and more about snapping selfies in front of every sign in town with the name Tyler on it. Now, of course, you may not know this, but Tyler, Texas is named for our 10th president, John Tyler, who was in the White House at the time that Texas became a state. So behind me right now is just a party atmosphere. People are looking up. Wow, it just is spectacular. I, I don't want to say that I was pessimistic, but I didn't think that it would come through at the last second like this, and I think other people are as well. It's also somewhat eerily quiet right now. A bustling city, the town square, and you can hear individual conversations right now. This party atmosphere, once totality ends, within the next minute or two, the party will pick back up. There's live music. And people are pleased with the show in the sky in Tyler, Texas. There's live music here on the downtown square. All kinds of restaurants have opened up with special menus, uh, with eclipse themed items and drinks. There's a lunar lager at the brewery here downtown. And so people are going to celebrate what a memorable day this will be. It actually is quite interesting. Down the street from us, there's a picnic lunch on the lawn of an antebellum home that's now a museum. And this is actually one of the only buildings in Tyler that was standing the last time a solar eclipse was visible here back in 1878. So totality in Tyler today, truly a once in a lifetime event for East Texas. The next time that we'll be able to see totality here in East Texas will be about 300 years from now in 2343. So truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. We are making the most of this moment in history in East Texas. Back to you. Lane taking us through I am just speechless. Lane, you got a little bit choked up earlier, and I actually started to tear up watching this. Thank you so much for kind of you know, walking us through this, but also just, you know, doing it with such, I don't know, humanity. You know, yeah. it's really, when you think about everything going on in the world, and this is something that unites us, it was just a beautiful report, Lane. Thank you so much. Really felt like we were there. Oh my goodness, absolutely, but our coverage is going to continue in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Hey, let's go ahead and check in with our team at KAIT. They have some live coverage going on right now. Cherokee Village. Oh, you're starting to hear kind of a hush come across the crowd. Everybody is getting ready. We've turned off the music. We're getting ready for totality. Looking up, it is almost here. TV. Case and Daly couldn't be out here, so he is getting a shout out from his mother's here. He told me to go ahead and give him a shout out. So get outside and enjoy this nice eclipse. We have a fantastic view. Everybody is starting to get, get quiet. You can start to see the lights even brighter on the Ferris wheel. Everybody's getting ready for this total eclipse. I'll have more coming up in just a little bit live in Cherokee Village. Aaron Castleberry, back to y'all. All right, thank you so much. That was a live coverage from our team at KAIT in Jonesboro, Arkansas. It's approaching totality there. 
this has just been an incredible day. It really has. <laughs> and you, you heard wow. them talk a little bit about getting some chills as that weather starts yeah. to dip. Yeah. And now we're going to turn to Sandra and Ross for a mm -hmm. look at what's ahead for the forecast for people who are in that path of totality. Yeah, you know, and you know, I think he's getting chills from the excitement and from the, the temperature. <laughs> yeah, both. So you know, it was, it was, you know, it gets dark, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It's, and Depending on whether the air is dry or if it's humid, it depends on how much the temperature will drop. Dry air, the air will cool much quicker, so you'll see a more uh, drastic drop in the temperature. Yeah, you know, and our next stop is going to be Jonesboro, Arkansas, and we can tell you exactly when their totality is expected uh, to begin or reach their maximum eclipse. Right, so the eclipse has already begun. That happened at 1.37 Eastern Daylight Time. It will reach its max at 2.56 Eastern Daylight Time. will last for two minutes and 25 seconds. Jonesboro is on the outer edge of that center point of the path. So if you're directly underneath the midpoint of the path, you'll get closer to four minutes or more. So they're on the edge, so it's a little bit shorter there. Yeah, you know, and then from there, we're going to check in with Cape Girardeau. And, you know, their totality is going to be around 3 p.m. That's when it'll get started. And it'll last, again, you know, around four minutes because they're near that central portion they're of the path. Center point. And it will all be over with in Cape Girardeau at 417 Eastern Daylight Time. And you'll still get to see something even after oh, totality itself ends. You know, we're going to have some tips a little later how you mm -hmm. can I uh, use a pinhole, pinhole projector, and that way you can see little crescents of sun on the on the ground. So you know, still some you know cool things to see. Waco, their temperatures are in the upper 70s. Same case for uh, Tyler, Texas, 80 degrees right now in Jonesboro. So probably a lot of t-shirts. Exactly <laughs> right, Sandra. And we saw all that blue sky in the live shot just a moment ago. So beautiful blue skies. It is going to be an amazing show there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Yeah, you know, and since they have sunny conditions, it'll, it'll be kind of interesting to see how much the temperature drops there. So we'll have to remember 80 degrees know, right now. Know. Yeah, that, that's our experiment for today. Yes, yeah. And Cape Girardeau at 75, so in the mid-70s. So we've got some nice weather for a lot of locations uh, that will be in the path of totality. Yeah, one of those locations experiencing that great weather, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. It is a popular place to be today. I like how you did that. <laughs> Joe McLean from our station KFBS is there. Hey Joe, what's going on now? Well, it uh, appears we are just minutes away from entering that totality stage. I, I have my, everybody has their glasses in hand right now because you kind of have to. Yeah, just a, a sliver of the, the, the sun is being revealed right now. And you can see behind me, the this is uh, the uh, Poplar Bluff High School, and you can see just that it has been just an eerie silence that has just fell over the crowd. There was music, the music has stopped. Clearly, people are, are, are really preparing for to share just these few minutes of, uh, of bizarre, just dusk in the middle of the day. Uh, and as you were kind of saying earlier, this is a moment where, regardless of uh, who you are, where you're from, what your economic status is, what your level of education is, what your politics are, everybody is experiencing this all together, which is really an amazing thing. And uh, there, be here in Poplar Bluff, we're pretty near the middle of the past. So we, uh, Poplar Bluff's a very, very popular, as you, as you said, uh, spot for major uh, municipalities around this area. Nashville, uh, uh, Memphis, just a couple hours away. St. Louis, a lot of, uh, of, of major cities uh, have fed right here into Poplar Bluff. Uh, and uh, of course, there's Merch. A lot of the, the local businesses are really trying to capitalize on this. As, as It's kind of like winning the lottery for, for a small town. Uh, they're merchandising. There was a shirt. I got a shirt. The, I got a funny shirt. Um, but they have moon stress balls there's food uh, this has really been a big big community event and it and it's uh, uh, a, it's really amazing to see uh, the unity here and everybody really just kind of coming together and again sharing this experience together we are now just just minutes away here in Poplar Bluff from uh, from entering uh, totality it does feel like the Sun is just kind of running out of batteries as I described earlier the temperature has has fallen uh, several degrees it's just noticeably cooler uh, 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 you can see my, I, I've had to use my, my camera lights, which I've never had to do at 2 uh, p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. So here we are. We are going to uh, 
be watching this, you can of course see uh, the where the uh, moon is positioned in front of the sun. So we're going to experience this, and we're again just a minute minutes away from uh, here in Poplar Bluff, beginning that four minute and eight second period where we will be uh, in complete uh, shadow of the moon here in uh, southeast Missouri. Back to you. Hey, Joe, before you go, I wanted to see, you said that you needed your light. Would you mind switching off your light so we can see the difference? I would love to be able to see how dark it is yeah, without absolutely. your light. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I have two lights, oh, actually, wow. so, so you can see. Yeah, it oh appears, uh, so I'll, I'm turning that off. You can see. Wow. This is what it looks. It almost looks like I'm being illuminated by a by a Walmart parking lot light. <laughs> if, you, you see what I mean? So this this is the sun. This is the sun. The sunlight. So it, it's really astonishing. Uh, let me step behind my camera for a minute, and I will I'll show you down the hill if if you'll indulge me really quick. You can see Absolutely. the crowds of people that have come into uh, Poplar Bluff. Let me sharpen that up. Got a big monitor there, Poplar Bluff High School. That would normally be the jumbotron for uh, football games. You can see uh, it's it's showing. It's got a nice camera shot. But then you can see, yeah, the the uh, scores of people who've come. Uh, to this high school campus, but really, I'm going to pan up really quick, and you can see the parking lot across the highway also full, full of people uh, with cameras, with special uh, observation equipments. I saw some telescopes. I don't know how those are going to help. Uh, those might be dangerous. I don't know, but uh, uh, it, but you can see again, it, we are. It appears we are in totality now. So it looks, it looks as though it's dusk, and yet. Nowhere on the horizon do you see that that image of the sunset. There's nowhere on the horizon. This is something we take for granted that we observe day in and day out. The 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 sun taking the normal pattern and providing us light. Right now, this is uh, this is something that we as as animals do not experience very often. So that's why this is bizarre. One concern I'm hearing. A siren, an emergency vehicle, traveled down the highway. A big, big concern during this. The, the, the. We are now in totality, very clearly. One of the big concerns was anybody who is out on the road. Uh, to, uh, and it appears the highway right now is completely empty. Everybody, uh, I'm, I'll pan over. You can see. You can see the highway there. No cars on the highway right now. It's, it's clear everybody is observing this. Well, it, it, there you got a. You've got a siren, a, uh, a lighted police car. Take a look at that, though. Take a look at that. You can see the, the. Uh, there's no, there's no light from the sunset. There we go. Now we've entered totality. You can see that the lights. You can hear the cheers from down the hill. The lights went on. We have entered totality now. You could, you, you saw it just went. Everybody is cheering now. This is a moment. Of, of unity for this uh, this area, this entire area. Wow. And uh, so here we are. It is apparently dusk, but it is 2 o'clock. We are in a total eclipse. We'll send it back to you. Incredible. Talk he, about a spectacle of an event. He deserves a raise. <laughs> Our coverage of the Great American Eclipse continues. <laughs> Rethink how you get breaking news. A rooftop collapses at a suburban hotel. With Local News Live, you get the big national stories direct from local reporters. Reporters who know the streets and the people. Authentic, unfiltered, live where the story is. Stay close, stay connected, because the big breaking stories are best told by those who live it. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always streaming, always free. And you're watching coverage of the Great American Eclipse here on Local News Live. And weather across the nation, we've had some beautiful views of the eclipse here coming across northeastern parts of Arkansas, now to southeastern Missouri. Some great weather, really, in the nick of time. We've had some clearing skies in this part of the country, and that now extends up into parts of Indiana. We're seeing clearing skies into Ohio, just a few high, thin clouds there. So we expect great viewing conditions for those of you around Toledo, over to the, to the Cleveland area. And 
And then once we get up into New York State, as we get north and east of Erie, skies have begun to clear out around Erie. But once we get into western New York, around Buffalo and Niagara, up to Watertown, there is a little bit more cloud cover there. And then once we get up into northern Vermont, just a few high, thin clouds. We're hoping those clouds will stay away just long enough that you guys will get a really, really great view of this amazing, amazing celestial event. As we get up into northern portions of Maine, things looking really good up there right now. We have bright, sunny skies and blue skies overhead. Your eclipse is coming just a little bit later this afternoon. Now, the inclement weather outside of the path of totality, where you will have a partial eclipse, unfortunately, I don't think a lot of you will see it here in the northern plain states. We're talking North Dakota, South Dakota, and a Minnesota. Other problem areas here across the areas around Mississippi and the parts of Louisiana. We have some scattered showers and some thunderstorms with some great viewing from central Florida up towards the Atlanta metro, Columbia, South Carolina, up into parts of Virginia as well, even around Washington, D.C., up towards New York, Philly, and Boston. Things are looking good right now. We'll take you to the West Coast. Some inclement weather here from Seattle down to Portland. A lot of clouds, even some wet weather, but from Reno to Las Vegas to Phoenix, things are looking good. We have plenty of breaks in the clouds in that part of the region. Now, we are going to be watching out for the potential for some severe thunderstorms a little bit later on today. This would be mainly after dark across areas such as Abilene, Dallas, over towards Shreveport, where there is a level three risk, an enhanced risk of severe weather. And in this region, we could see the potential for a few tornadoes, damaging straight line winds, flooding rainfall, and even the potential for some hail. So again, in the Southern Plain States, watch out for some storms tonight if you will be traveling. You're watching The Great American Eclipse here on Local News Live. to the great American eclipse happening now on Local News Live. I'm Deborah El Farone. As you can see, we are really excited about this. I'm Rashida <laughs> Kaba. For those of you just joining us, we are following the path of totality. You're taking a look at Missouri, where they are in near darkness. The moon is passing over the sun, turning day to dusk, and in just a few minutes, Indiana, Tennessee, Kentucky, they will all be in totality as well. In 15 states, they get to experience this celestial phenomenon. It is just incredible. But for now, we're going to join the coverage from our team, WFIE, in Evansville, Indiana. You guys as meteorologists, we've all been working hard for this, but you guys have really been out in the community telling people about it. It's been so cool to go to all three states to uh, learn about this. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's emotional, it's been a lot of fun. I've had to go to the public library to learn. I didn't realize there's like 40,000 objects pulling gravitational-wise on the planet Earth, so I actually don't want it to be over. Yeah, I know, we have just, we're so, oh my goodness, the street lights just came on here wow. on Quarantine News, that's that is crazy. Cool. We weren't expecting that, so that's awesome to see. Truly, this is history in the making, and we are just so I blessed. I only usually see these at 2 in the morning when I come <laughs> I to work. We're so blessed to be part of it here at 14 News. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage today. We are just moments away from reaching totality, where the moon is completely blocking the sun from Earth. Honestly, I'm getting kind of chilly. It is 2 o'clock right two, now. Two minutes to go. Yeah, it's kind this of chilly crazy. out here. I wish I had a sweater. And you know what? The moon would get a speeding ticket. It's, it's racing. <laughs> the shadow is racing at 2,000 miles an hour. So it's going to cover. It's gotten darker since we've been out of here. I'm going to go sure ahead and has. put my glasses on. If you're my looking up to the on. sky, you can barely see a sliver of the sun. We do have a crew in Albion, Illinois. Robinson Miles is out there with the crew. So we are showing people out there. There are plenty of people out there enjoying it. I'm hearing in my ear right now, it is very dark out there. I'm seeing birds flying. They're probably wanting to go back to their nest, right? <laughs> worried that they're, it's about to hit home. We have uh, on our road out here, I see street lights flickering on too. So it's kind of funny, we weren't expecting that. Well, there's people at Massacre Park Zoo, the patrons out there, they're gonna be able to study some of the animal behavior. I feel like it's New Year's Eve overall. We have a countdown, what's the time check? Yeah, less than 30, 30 seconds. seconds. We're gonna take to the totality. sun shot full so you can enjoy it, so we can enjoy it. All these street lights are coming on, this is crazy. What an exciting, exciting time, history truly in the making. I can't wait, count down to 2.02. Kenny Perkins <laughs> will shout out the time. We're coming into totality. 
This is going to be incredible. More street lights are coming on here. Mm -hmm. It's definitely getting darker. It is 2.02 currently. All right, I have my glasses on. I'll announce when we're in totality. And you'll be able to see Bailey's beads. That's a topography that's working off the moon, the landscape, the diamond ring, the last glimmers of light from the sun. We're about almost to totality. Here it is, a few seconds away. I have my glasses on. This is going to be a wild ride. I'm Bailey's beads. We're covered. Totality. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. Woo! It is safe Stay now Venus. to take your there's glasses Venus. off. I'm sorry. There's Venus. I can see Jupiter. There is Venus, the brightest object in the sky. And that's the sun's atmosphere. We're showing the riverfront right now. It is dark what you're seeing. It's dark just about everywhere in the tri-state right now. And again, it is safe if you are outside to take off your glasses. But if you're looking up in the sky, Byron, what are those bright lights we're seeing? You mentioned that's the sun's atmosphere, and this is safe to look at overall. And then you're also seeing v Venus. You also have planets up there. Also higher to the left, there is Jupiter. So if you live above totality, up and orient yourself a little to the east at almost at 90 degrees that's the planet jupiter you can see venus out there the cirrus clouds aren't inter interrupting anything we're just going to enjoy this for a moment we've been waiting a long time for this just absorb this once in a lifetime experience i can't believe how venus how bright it is it's the brightest object and this is the sun's atmosphere which scientists will be studying the street lights have come on here in the 14 wfie mm -hmm. parking lot Three minutes of totality on the west side, four minutes across southern Illinois. Time check, we're at 2.04. 2.04. Now, remember, coming out of totality, you'll need your eclipse glasses on again. A little bit longer across southern Illinois. Right now, you're looking at Evansville's riverfront where plenty of people have gathered into the tri-state to enjoy the solar eclipse. This is the moment we've been waiting for, folks. Soak it in. It's amazing, isn't it? I think it's Here's wonderful. another view, the sun's it. corona, this is our second see one. Venus, Jupiter. Deborah, you know, one thing I love about this is the community aspect mm -hmm. of it and the unity. I mean, there's so many crazy things going on, but to see this is amazing. Yes, let's go to Indianapolis now. That's where Joshua Short is, and oh, wow. Where did he go? <laughs> Just incredible. It looks so dark there. Okay, it looks like, looks like we lost that shot there, unfortunately. So Indianapolis is the place of the Motor Speedway, and right. that's actually... Um, one of the places experiencing totality right now. Oh, our shot is back. He's back. Joshua Short, what you got from WNDU? We hear you. Oh, hey, we're sorry about that, but you can imagine a lot of moving parts right now. Just listen to this crowd. I'm also going to try to do something if I can. I want you guys to see what they are looking at right now. I'm going to try and put a filter over this camera lens. Uh, uh, work with us. Here we go, Deborah Rashid. I'm going to try this. We're going to try. I'm going to have my photojournalist point up at what we're seeing. This is, this is truly outstanding. I don't know if you guys can get a look at what we're seeing right there through the camera lens, but we are seeing the sun's atmosphere right now. It is like turned nighttime suddenly in Indianapolis. This and we're going to take this off because it appears it may be a little bit more difficult to achieve than we thought, and that's okay. That's live TV. But nonetheless, you can see and hear the reaction here in Indianapolis. Look, we've been talking about this for weeks now, but when you see this place get dark suddenly and this place cools down and the wind picks up, there is a dramatic, somewhat eerie and exciting moment that is that is palpable, that is really hard to describe happening here at the Speedway right now. Um, it, it, we are in a place that you don't see this many people at the Speedway unless it's Memorial Day weekend for the, for the Indianapolis 500. And so the fact that we're seeing these, I mean, look at these kids. Look at the family members. Look at the babies. Look at the, 
We have some folks here from Purdue University. We have astronauts here on site. Uh, we have obviously people just like us, storytellers and journalists here, just in awe right now. And it's really indescribable, guys. It, it, it really is. Well, Joshua. I mean, the stars are out. <laughs> it's insane. Joshua, I just um, wasn't sure if you could hear me. It is incredible. And I'm wondering, because you have like a little jacket on, what's the weather like? Is it true? Is it getting a little chillier? It is indeed. In fact, you saw me just under an hour ago, and I had to take this off because it got hot really quickly. Um, it was 72 degrees at last check. I believe we're now in the mid 60s, and it could be lower at this point. But that shows you just how quickly things can change. We're in totality right now, and this is something that nobody has ever experienced before here, and probably no one else will experience in this lifetime, as it is a once in a lifetime event. This is, it is indescribable right now, and you can hear the cheers all the way from the track, which is about a city block away from me here, not even. And obviously, so many people here um, in the plaza just enjoying quite the sight. It, it's, it's literally like a scene out of a movie. I know you guys have been seeing this over the last hour and a half, but to actually see this, to actually experience this, it's truly remarkable. Hey, Joshua. Uh, I'm wondering, what has it been like to yes. see this uh, amongst all the kids that are there? I mean, it's been emotional for some of the reporters that we've spoken to. What has been your reaction to this? I think that's a, the shocking part to me, honestly. When you're reporting on this for weeks and you're, you're at the desk and talking about what to expect and what officials are saying and how cities are preparing, I think it's hard to stay in the moment and talk about why. We are in totality right now, forgive me. You can see the glow. If we can point our camera upwards, this is outstanding. It, you just asked me to describe the moment, and I get a lump in my throat because what you're seeing right now is, is totality. And it is really hard to describe this. No matter how much we prepared you, our viewers, for this, being in this place, in this space right now, uh, it is, it is, it is heart-rendering. It, it, it really is. Wow. He is getting emotional, just like we're getting emotional. Yeah. Um, Joshua Short, we're going to let you take the rest of this in. You are doing a great job out there. Thank you for bringing that Thank you. feeling to us. Yeah, oh certainly an emotional time to be out there. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue to chase the path of totality. Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's check in with our team coverage from our station WOIO in Cleveland, Ohio. Light. It's dark. I mean, it, it really is, and it's even going to get darker, and it's it's a weird kind of feeling, isn't it, Nick? It absolutely. 309. So still four about minutes four away. minutes away, and you can see this is a live picture right now as the moon almost completely covering the sun. 313 to 317. It's 310 now, so we're three, three minutes, minutes away. away. Mm -hmm. And you just see everyone looking up with their safety glasses on at Crusher Stadium, and we have camera crews everywhere. We have a camera crew, as you saw, looking up at the sun. We have weddings happening at, down in Tiffin and at Progressive Field. We're talking about opening day. Yeah, we are, and we're going to take a live look at Progressive Field. Um, we're going to get a, a, a view of what it's looking like there. And um, you got people in this in this that are already in the ballpark waiting for the game to start. And you can see the the, the, the guys from the Guardians. Those are ball players that are on the field uh, as they're just a couple hours away from opening day. And you could see the big crowd already in the stands and, and everybody there uh, with the safety glasses on and, and getting set for what is just going to be. Well, it is. I mean, you, you hear people say a once in a lifetime event. And Two this minutes is really away. What, what this is. So, Two minutes um, away, and our Tiffany Tucker, Chris Fry, are outside Progressive Field watching this with us. If we get quiet for a little bit, we're going to let you watch the totality with us because I guess we don't want to let our words, right, get in the way yep. of such a an once-in-a-lifetime incredible experience. Yeah, and it's quiet here, too. Have you <laughs> noticed how quiet it's gotten at the ballpark? Whispering, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 313, we're, we're just a couple minutes away, and uh, boy, this is... Uh this is something. <laughs> it really is pretty cool. The temperature cool. is cooler if you're outside. It is definitely darker. You can see I-90, the traffic, 
Just a, a few lights, cars going lights. by, but everyone's got their headlights on. Yeah, the lights, people's lights. We're watching people drive up and down 90, and their lights, you know, the automatic lights have popped on people's uh, cars. This so. is it. 312, one minute away from lights out in the land. Well, the path of totality is headed up north, and that's where we find our uh, national correspondent, Peter Sampa. He's in Niagara Falls, and Peter, I am just so excited. It was cloudy before, but what is it like now? Well, Deborah and Rashida, we are on a roller coaster, and we kind of want to get off of it right now. We'd rather just have some certainty. At this moment, we still have cloud cover. A few hours ago, actually a few minutes ago even, we had some peek through. As this eclipse was starting, you started hearing cheers around the grounds. Folks here all day, we've gone through rain, clouds. They started to see some of that sun peeking through. It was so exciting. It felt magical for a moment. Now we're back to that cloud cover, unfortunately. but. We're still hanging on. We still got a few minutes until totality is starting to set in. These raindrops on my head, not convincing me we're going to get a full viewing of this. But as someone told me, I've been speaking to visitors throughout the day. As one of them told me, even if we can't see it, we're still here to experience it. It's starting to get cold. It is starting to get a little bit darker. So one way or another, these people are going to see something that we really are only going to get once in a lifetime, Deborah and Rashida. So this is fun. Nonetheless, we could do with a little bit better weather. I don't know if you guys can do anything on your end to boost the vibes here, but we're trying as best we can. I don't know. Zampa vibes are always high. They always are. Peter, tell us, I mean, is there a lot of people out there? I know this is one of the most popular places in the country to be, Niagara Falls. Uh, what is the crowd like out there? Yeah, I, I got to say, I got the coolest assignment today. We'll have our, our photographer here, Tim, show you around. He's the best in the business. He knows what we want to see. Uh, we've had tents out here all day long. Earlier, there weren't that many people, but now it really is starting to fill in. It's that crowd that park rangers were expecting. I've been talking to them, asking for estimates. They didn't want to give one out, but you hear people throwing out numbers like a million. I, I don't think we're obviously there here at Terrapin Point. Uh, Tim's spanning the falls here. Um, and we can also see over to Canada. We don't need to show them on camera, though. We're, we're, we're just doing fine here in Niagara Falls, New York. But uh, I think we're now going to go over to Erie, Pennsylvania, another cool setting for this totality eclipse. And my colleague, Molly Eerie. Martinez, another one of the best in the business. Wow. Hey, can you guys hear me in the studio? Hey, and we are here. I just described this total eclipse as eerie. We are in Erie, Pennsylvania, and that is certainly what we're feeling right now. We are seconds away from totality. As you can see, there's kind of a hush over the crowd. There's huge excitement. I just spoke with a religion professor here at Mercyhurst University. You hear the excitement of this crowd. We're going to dim the lights a little bit here so we can really experience what is going on? Oh my goodness, that is unbelievable. Um, there's been a lot of emotion. I feel myself kind of getting emotional right now. Uh, I think the last time I cried, I was being born. Um, but this is really an um, I spoke with a religious uh, studies professor here earlier, and he was talking about what civilizations thought this was before we had an understanding of the science behind the eclipse. And almost all of these civilizations kind of viewed this as a bad omen. Ancient believed it was the dragon eating the sun. Uh, they believed, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, some believed they had to pick up and leave as an exodus. The Incas believed displeased with the sun, so they would do sacrifices. But as we know now, obviously, this is science, and the people that I spoke with today are so excited to have this be a moment for science to really galvanize of young scientists. And let me just say, this is unbelievable. This is unlike anything I have ever seen. We are in totality right now. You can see the corona coming off the sun. Again, we are in Erie, Pennsylvania. There are hundreds of people here experiencing this absolute phenomenon. You know, we've been preparing for this eclipse for a month now. We, we knew it was coming, but nothing can describe actually experiencing 
this. We're here with one man who this is his third eclipse, and he, he said that when you see an eclipse, you're going to spend the rest of your life chasing total eclipses, and I totally understand that now. This is really an unbelievable moment. Thanks, Great Television, for putting me on this assignment. This is a great one. <laughs> uh, but this is just absolutely unbelievable. And like I said, I'm, I've, I feel myself getting emotional. This is unlike anything I've, I've ever seen. And, and so much of the United States experiencing this. Like I said, this eclipse in totality is kind of like a seatbelt across the United States. We are at the top. We are at the shoulder experiencing sort of the tail end of this eclipse. But what a gift it is to be able to experience this firsthand. I'm going to send it all back to you. Certainly a gift for us to be able to experience it alongside her as well. And Peter Zampa is standing by. We just had him on earlier in Niagara Falls, New York. Peter, what's it looking like as you guys are reaching totality? Yeah, guys, I, I'm just speechless. I know I have to talk to you, but I, I th this is leaving so many of us speechless. We're starting to hear a lot of those cheers now because we are in totality. It is just pitch black. Uh, you can't imagine anything like this unless you're there living it, which we are lucky enough to do right now. We actually, guys, I know I was just talking about begging for that break in cloud cover. We got it just before that moment of totality. So as we said, while we're not seeing the actual eclipse right now, we are all feeling it. We are experiencing it. And that's what this is all about. You've got kids everywhere. You've got thousands and thousands of people seeing something they've probably never seen before asking all of these cool questions. Why is this happening? The governor of New York is here with us. We've got astronauts walking around. It just does not get much cooler than what we are seeing right now. Again, just pitch black. I don't know, Tim, if you can help us scan out on the crowd right here, but also look across to Niagara Falls, Canada, if you can, Tim. That's a city that is just completely lit up right now. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be 3.30 in the afternoon. We don't have sunset for another few hours usually. And it's just a city at night. It looks like it's just over there. The nightlife is going crazy. But the reality is this is just a phenomenon in our universe that we are so lucky to be living through. The crowd is cheering again because we're starting to get a little bit more of a peek through. It's still hiding just a bit, but folks are able to see a little bit more now. Again, all day long, we've just been begging for these clouds to go away at the big moment. They didn't, they didn't give in to our demands, but it, it is still a very, very cool thing to see. Again, one of those things that a, a lot of folks just won't ever see again. So we are lucky to be here, surrounded by all these people who just wanted to see something different, something special that they've never seen before in their lives. We'll give you one more pan around this crowd. You've got all the phones out. Again, kids everywhere on the Niagara Falls, just such a special place to be for this moment. One of the most iconic settings in the United States of America. And we get to be here for an event that's not gonna happen for another 20 years. It really just does not get much more special than this. And you are starting to feel those vibes really pick up as we're getting a little bit of a peek through, guys. We thought it might happen. Oh, how cool is that? The moment of totality and the clouds go away on the cloudiest day in history, rain. And we got a glimpse of a total solar eclipse. And these people are rightfully going nuts for it. That is just as cool as it gets. And they all deserved it too. I, I mean, these people have been here for hours now. In the cold, Just so cool. And now it's starting to go a little bit lighter, but we're gonna get another break in the clouds, folks. And just like that, we're back to dawn. Just never seen anything like this in my life. On Niagara Falls, a total solar eclipse. And we do have birds behind us going a little crazy. I know when we were building up to this, a lot of folks were wondering how animals were going to react. Hey, Tim, I don't know if you can get that. They're going pretty quick, but they, like us, had no idea what was going on. I think it was a special moment for these seagulls behind us as well. Um, but just an amazing, amazing event here on Niagara Falls, guys.
Now, Peter, we heard Molly say earlier that once you see one eclipse, you are now an eclipse chaser. Yeah. Now, is this the truth for you? You've now experienced it. I saw you get a little bit emotional there. Is this something you're going to continue to do? Uh, I mean, why not? Uh, you heard how excited I was. It's just you think, OK, it's going to get a little dark. It, it's, it's, it gets dark every night. That's fine. But what we just experienced here and also if you believe in, in higher powers or what have you, the fact that it just came out through the clouds while in totality after again, we had the cloudiest day ever. It, it is just such an unbelievable feeling. So am I going to go in 2044? You betcha somewhere. All right, we're going with you for sure. Senior National Correspondent Peter Zampa <laughs> taking us through totality in Niagara Falls, New York. Thank you. Oh, I'm just a little speechless there, but we're going to go now and check in on our team coverage from our station, WOIO, in Cleveland, Ohio. The, the eclipse was, was, the, was the best part of the day. Sam's reaction was the second best. If anyone ever questions how passionate she, she is. Really is. <laughs> All about, our meteorologists are. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I know they were talking about those Here Comes the Sun what was playing at Progressive Field. Total Eclipse of the Heart was playing here <laughs> right, right. at Crusher's Stadium. And I think we're going to go inside to Leah Doherty, who is uh, on the field at Progressive Field. Leah, uh, we, we heard the emotions uh, outside from Jason and, and Tiffany and Chris and from Sam and from even Nicole and myself, who were just awestruck by this. What was it like there in the ballpark? You guys, it really was such a special moment where it felt like time really stopped. We're here getting ready for a baseball game. The Guardians and White Sox home opener here. First pitch at 510, but for a brief moment in totality, the White Sox players came out, the Guardians players came out, and everybody just stood out here and watched. The guys were on their phones taking pictures. Everybody had their glasses on, and it was just a moment where time stood still. Now we're back to business as usual, right? We're getting ready to a game. The Guardians and White Sox actually changed their batting practice schedule today to be able to make time for this moment. But I'm here with Mark Schwab and Ashley Holder, and we all just stood together in awe watching this solar eclipse. We couldn't have asked for better weather. I know we've been talking about that, but for baseball in April right here in Cleveland, the conditions have been incredible. What a moment that we were here able to witness. And if we're only getting started because the the fun continues. First pitch at 510 Guardians home opener between the White Sox and the guards here. The fans are in the stands. Gates opened at 2 o'clock, so they were able to make their way in. But what a special moment that we were able to witness live at Progressive Field. Leah Doherty, 19 News. Look at the sun shining in the ballpark, just like just like here. It's, I, I, uh, it's our job to put stuff into words and I, I I didn't really have them at first I, I don't think I still do and it, it the, the I can't get over the sunset thing I don't know why I don't know why I just I can't and so uh, everyone's gonna have their own little thing about this and I, I hope you really enjoyed it um, I really hope you did and I know the people out in Sandusky probably did right can you imagine being at Cedar Point right you have beautiful Lake Erie as a backdrop how are things out there Brittany Weir has been alive out at Cedar Point what was it like in Sandusky watching that incredible incredible event Brittany yeah, it's absolutely beautiful out here. There was people all over the lawn right here, people on the beach. Again, we had those cheers as well, but it was really cool was to see the seagulls. They were kind of going crazy here at the beach at Cedar Point. Some of the rides lit up as well because it was so dark. That was, that was live coverage Yeah, <laughs> from WOIO, our station out there in Cleveland. You are watching the Great American Eclipse. Rethink how you get breaking news. A rooftop collapses at a suburban hotel. With Local News Live, you get the big national stories direct from local reporters. Reporters who know the streets and the people. Authentic, unfiltered, live where the story is. Stay close, stay connected, because the big breaking stories are best told by those who live it. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always streaming, always free. 
Well, we have been taking you through the path of totality. It has been amazing. Now, some areas have had cloud cover, but a lot of the areas that we checked in with, those clouds cleared out enough to see something spectacular. So stay with us. We're going to be making more stops. Now, in terms of the weather, we are seeing some showers and storms starting to form in southeastern Texas. They've already experienced their totality, but some wet weather and also potentially some strong storms may be a factor in those areas as they're hitting those roads and, and heading back home. Now, we're also seeing some cloud cover cover moving across portions of New York and that's going to make its way towards the New England region so they may have a, a slight increase in cloud cover in Burlington, Vermont but I think they'll still have uh, decent viewing conditions. Now other areas not in the path of totality will still see something but unfortunately it looks like uh, the northern plains are going to be dealing with some cloud cover also some rain and may see a few snowflakes uh, mixed in with that rain but again we're going to be watching this area uh, from Texas over to Louisiana also over towards Mississippi for showers and storms. And unfortunately, as we get into later today, we're going to see that potential for some of those storms to be strong to severe. We're also seeing some cloud cover and also some rain, some high elevation snow uh, for the Pacific Northwest. California, uh, looking clear, should have a nice view of their partial eclipse. Uh, but again, along that path of totality from Texas up towards New York and Vermont, most locations are looking pretty good. But you still need to be weather aware. You need to tuned to your local gray station in Texas. We have uh, Waco, Texas, KWTX, and also we'll see that potential for those severe thunderstorms even into late tonight. So stay weather aware, have a way to receive your weather alerts even after you go to bed for tonight. May have a lot of wet weather as well uh, starting out your day on Tuesday. But as for today into tonight, we do have a level three out of a five level threat ranking system where you see that orange shading uh, that's uh, including Dallas and also over towards Wichita Falls. That's where we could see numerous severe thunderstorms. But again, I think it's going to be later this afternoon. Unfortunately, by around uh, five or six, I think is when we'll start to see those areas, uh, seeing that weather really ramping up. Can't rule out a few tornadoes, also some large hail, possibly to the size of golf balls, and looking at some strong damaging winds in the forecast as well. You're watching The Great American Eclipse. Welcome to the Great American Eclipse happening uh, right now, like now on now. Local News Live. I'm Deborah <laughs> Alfarone. And I'm Rashida Kaba. For those of you just joining us, we have been following the path of totality as it crosses the United States. And it is getting dark in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So here's live coverage from our station, WFSB. Um, Probably not because you're how old? Ten. Ten. Oh, you might have seen 2017. Okay. But you were very young, very little then. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I've seen 2017. Hey, how are you? Oh, that's awesome. And you're here with your family? Yeah. This is great. Thank you so much for coming. Hi, thank you for having us. This is great. It's so amazing. It's incredible. Isn't it? It's just terrific. It's, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. That's what people are saying. Yeah, and, and if you know, we spent a lot of time out here today. Um, sunscreen was certainly Sunscreen was certainly key before some of these clouds started rolling in. Exactly. But there's actually been a noticeable, sensible change in temperature uh, as the eclipse has been taking place. It's, you it's gradual. Yeah, I have goosebumps. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> it's really incredible. So we hope that you have an opportunity to see it watching us here on Channel 3. Hey, little man, what are you up to? Are you guys watching the eclipse? Yeah. What are you seeing through your glasses? Um, it's mostly this, the moon. That is, and how old are you? Five. Five. And what's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel, you are a very smart young man, and I think he's going to become a meteorologist. That's incredible. That is incredible. That's so awesome. The people are having such a good time, so much fun, and it's going to continue. The party continues. Yeah, so we still have until the 4 o'clock hour for the partial phase for us to end here in Connecticut, but things are still ramping up. In the path of totality in northern New England, Mike's lifer, he is in that path. He's going to see 100%. Well, we saw about 93% here in Connecticut. He's live in Presque Isle, Maine. Mike, how are you? Good to see you. Mark Scott, sounds like you guys are having an awesome day in Connecticut, and we are approaching totality here in Presque Isle, Maine. We are on the UMaine Presque Isle campus right now, and it's getting dark, and it's getting 
chilly. We can still feel a bit of wind. The temperature has dropped dramatically, though, and we are watching the skies get darker by the second, approaching totality. Totality here begins just after 3.32. My glasses are still on. We still need the glasses to be able to view it. But all I can see is a little sliver of the sun still exposed. And there's this really cool phenomenon that sometimes happens during total solar eclipses. And uh, they can happen during partial eclipses too called Bailey's beads. And what that is is actually the uh, sunlight shining through the valleys, the peaks and valleys on the moon's surface. And there's the cheers as we have reached totality. So at this point in time, it is safe to take the glasses off and view the sun's corona. Just to give you an idea of what it's like to be here right now, no matter what direction you look, it feels, it looks like uh, it's around sunset. And you can still hear the cheers behind me as everybody is just going wild. What an incredible event absolutely breathtaking unreal to actually be here experiencing there's a, a few hundred people here who have turned out to this uh event at humane presque isle and everything is just outside of the cheers quiet we've lost some of the uh some of the wind things have calmed down a bit i can see stars i can see planets it looks almost like nighttime the birds have have left their roosts. We've seen some birds flying overhead. And again, no matter what direction I actually look in, it looks like it is sunset right now. 360 degrees of sunset. You can see everybody out here on their phones. We have people out with telescopes who have been here documenting and enjoying this since it began. We will reach our peak of totality around 3.33. And we're also one of the last places in the U.S. to actually experience totality. After this, the eclipse will be visible in, uh, in Canada. And then it becomes the great Canadian eclipse, uh, which, of course, is uh, beyond what we tend to cover. Uh, so really just an, an incredible event here and just unreal to experience this with a group of, of, of like-minded individuals. We're with, we're with a few hundred people who have all come to sort of see this exact same thing unfold. So what we're looking at uh, is the sun's corona. And that is uh, that little bit of light that you can see around the moon. So right now, the moon is between the Earth and the sun. Again, it is safe to look at this without eclipse glasses on during totality. So this is one of the, the perks of being uh, in Presque Isle right now is that we can actually just take this in for what it is. We don't need to worry about having the eclipse glasses on. As the moon continues its path, its journey, and eventually we start to see sunlight break back through, we will have to put the eclipse glasses back on uh, to continue to watch this event unfold. But again, we are here with a few hundred people who are all like-minded individuals who came out just to enjoy this celestial show and a show it has been some people here have been uh camped out since since this morning a lot of people drove up last night and there is the moon pulling away from the sun the crowd again erupting with cheers as we get to this next phase. So we'll be in a partial eclipse here until a little bit after 4.30, and then things will begin to improve. So what we, again, just experienced here in Presque Isle, Maine, is totality. I'm gonna just put my glasses away here. Again, at this point in time, it's starting to get bright out, and it's starting to get bright out fairly quickly. Uh, so now, if we were to look again at the sun, we need to have the glasses. So uh, just an incredible event. Um, we've been watching people over here uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wave a couple of my friends over who I was talking to earlier to do a, qu a quick little interview on TV. These are some people that were uh, talking with us earlier. They drove up here from Bath, Maine. Tell us a little bit about, about what we all just experienced together. That was amazing. I... That coverage from our station, our reporters at WFSB, which is in Connecticut, traveling mm -hmm. to Presque Isle, Maine, where... They brought us along on the path of totality. They had the best seat in the house, I think. And then we, <laughs> and you, did after that. So, okay, a little while ago, you might remember the incredible, awe-inspiring sight mm -hmm. in Niagara Falls. 
That's where right? we find, yes, LNL senior national correspondent Peter Zampa. He is live there. Peter, what is it like? I know people are kind of clearing out, or are they still taking in uh, the sights and sounds? Well, Deborah and Rashida, it's a new day here. Uh, and I also mean that because I've been complaining about the cloud cover all day. And now, of course, the sun won't go away. It's been peeking through the clouds ever since totality. Folks getting that opportunity to see the moon covering the sun as it goes on its journey, as we just heard in that last report. So it's still cool for a lot of these folks, but it is starting to rain a little bit. So we are seeing a lot of these folks clearing out. But they got to see the big show at the end of the day. The coolest thing, it just right at that moment of totality, these clouds that have been lingering all day just got out of the way and let us experience this truly once in a lifetime opportunity. It really was uh, very moving and it kind of makes you feel like, wow, we're just these little cogs in the wheel of, yeah. of science and life here. <laughs> it looks like they had a blast there. I know he had the best it, it's, seat in the house. Yeah, it, it is so true, though, right? You have all these kids. I know I talked about it before, but it just makes them ask so many awesome questions. And it makes them want to experience things like this again or, or go places, maybe go to space. Again, I, I said this earlier, we've got astronauts walking around. How cool is that? Just go up to them and say, hey, how was space? And it'll give you this long answer and a long explanation of what we saw here today. Uh, you've also got the governor of New York, but you've got folks who have been traveling from all over the place. I spoke to some folks. One, she said it was her bucket list to see an eclipse. Then I, I had really thought that much about total eclipses until a few months ago when we started planning for this amazing coverage for which I'll always be grateful and I also spoke to another lady so she, she said she bought a new car so she could make the journey here she actually bought her eclipse glasses nine months ago uh, we've also seen a bunch of weddings here today uh, I spoke to a guy who does a lot of weddings here at Niagara Falls again it's a very popular national park but he said he was doing five weddings here today from folks from Missouri Indiana all over New York so it, it really just is a special day for thousands and thousands of people and it also helps the local economy we were speaking to uber drivers who said today is going to be a big day for me i was in a coffee shop earlier it took me 45 minutes to get a coffee which didn't feel fun at the time as i was trying to wake up but it but it shows you the widespread impact whether it be knowledge or economic it, it is just such a cool cool event Absolutely. You know, one thing that you had said, and really it, it also kind of hit me because I went to the Smithsonian when we were watching that story earlier on the Air and Space Museum. You know, it gets kids interested and in asking questions about science and space exploration. And, you know, it's really like we're all kind of getting immersed in STEM. Yeah. And so, what, was there something that stood out to you specifically, Peter? Well, in the lead up to this, this is a, a, an astronomer's dream, right? Is to have a day like this because they know you're going to get kids from all walks of life interested in this kind of stuff. To come here today, all you needed was a way to get here. I mean, we walked over to this park, so a lot of folks drove from all over. It, 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 it's an experience that so many people were able to partake in, and it is going to get those young minds flowing. I, I know a lot of us older folks, it, we're getting emotional during this because it makes us feel different things, but for kids, I think they were just thinking, wow, what is going on here, and how can I see it again, and how can I maybe explain it better in the future, whether it be furthering my, my education in astronomy or math, like you said, all these STEM subjects. I, I think this is exactly what scientists all over the country wanted to happen and, and it really came through in a big way. Peter, I'm not gonna lie, the views behind you look so amazing and beautiful. Be sure to take some photos and send them our way. And by the way, when you're talking about older folks, that's you, man. Oh, oh okay, I thought you... I... Okay, that ain't us. <laughs> These are great. Don't zoom in too much, Tim. But hey, if, we, if you want us to show you really quick, we can get you a nice little beauty shot. I know you guys uh, want to get me out of the way here. Uh, we'll show you wow. the, these Niagara Falls one more time. I mean, it is just, again, uh, I won the assignment battle of today. I, I, I guess I paid for it with cloud cover all day, but now it is starting to lighten up. And it is just one of those sites that you only dream about when you're growing up. Uh, truly special day here at Niagara Falls in New York. A beautiful sight to see. Peter Zampa, thanks so much for joining us. So the phenomenon came and went, but the celebrations continue in Indy. Oh yeah, they are having a blast out there at the Indy 500 race car track. Uh, WNDU's Joshua Short, he is there. Josh, last time we saw you, you guys were in totality. He had a jacket on. He did have a jacket on. I see it's off now. <laughs>
I had a jacket on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did. And then the sun came out again. Uh, it is really hot again out here. But I tell you what, it, there was an energy that you cannot describe out here, and it had nothing to do with the sun at that moment. It was, it was powerful. We just heard Peter talk about it briefly there. It is hard to describe. And I'm not just saying that. I asked the kids as well. You know, kids, they say the darndest things. And so why not ask them how they felt and what they saw? And when I talked to them just a couple minutes ago, they could not describe it. They thought they would see fire. They thought they would see something orange. But then when you see something that is almost pure white and you see this refraction of light around it, it is just something really powerful and, and, and somewhat symbolic in a way to so many people here on the ground who traveled thousands of miles to come to such a sacred place. Uh, for different reasons, right? We're talking about a racetrack here. We're talking about racing, but that's not the, the case right now. We were looking up in, into space and so far away, yet we felt um, as if it was right here in front of us. And it was something really special, guys. It, it's really indescribable. 2044 is the next time we are going to have one in the United States. Tell me, are you <laughs> now hooked as an eclipse chaser? You know what? I am. I will say this. We had a lot of eclipse chasers out here. We saw folks with their telescopes. We saw people looking up about an hour before and would not look down until after totality. That was something that was very unique. You could feel leading up to the moments of totality. You could see people beginning to look up. You saw this place just calm down a little bit and then things quieted down. And then the first screams we heard is when we were on with you. And so the viewers had the front row seat just like I did, but I said this about 30 minutes ago, and I'm going to say it again to both of you guys. It was surreal because we are in a position to inform people, right, and to educate people and to let people know what to expect and how to prepare, and then it happens. And when this happened, it was, it was something really special and undeniably um, unique. I think that's one thing I can tell you that being here in Indianapolis, at the site of what everyone calls is the center of the racing world. This was the center of something else for a brief moment in time. And it is something that I will always remember. It is something I think so many people here will always remember. And after a day like this, I think it's only right that you, you break out the Indy 500 jug of milk. I think that's the best way to celebrate, right? <laughs> You know, you are a great reporter, and now you're also an umbrophile, which is what they call a, an eclipse chaser, which I just learned, by the way. So <laughs> put that on your business card. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely will. One last thing I want to say. You're going to notice people leaving out of here pretty quickly, and it's not because they're bored. It's because there's this team called Purdue in the national championship, so they're probably going to head to a bar now, um, pending if they're with kids or not. So that's what's happening here right now, too, if you just wanted me to describe the scene really quickly behind me here. <laughs> hey, you guys have a lot going on in Indianapolis. Looking forward to that game later on tonight, too. I'm loving it. Thank you so much for your reporting. Really, I felt it. When you got emotional, I was like, ooh, I got chills. And it really, you, you brought it to all of us. Thank you so much, Joshua Short. It was incredible. It really was. I mean, to see reporters get emotional like that, you know, a lot of times they're covering the story, but to be able to be part of history is something short, nothing short of amazing. It really is. Let me ask you both, how did you feel watching those reporters? I have to admit that it did get darker than I was expecting in yeah. a lot of places, mm -hmm. and I love it. It sounds like a sporting event because everybody yeah, starts so to, you know, oh, all the cheers. I loved, I loved all the cheers and just the emotion. I mean, we were feeling it. We're in a yeah. studio, so we're actually not experiencing it. <laughs> everybody else experiencing it, experiencing it across the country. It yeah. was just yeah. a glorious sight. And I know Are you, you making spaghetti for us? Yeah, it looks like it. You know, <laughs> for those still in the partial eclipse realm, which a lot of folks are mm -hmm. along the East Coast, you can still get a really interesting view here, Sander, with a colander, something you just use every day for spaghetti, right? Yeah, so if you don't have eclipse classes, this is a way you can indirectly view mm -hmm. uh, the, the eclipse and you, know, you don't risk eye damage. Exactly. So you obviously want to have your back to the sun. The sun will shine through these small little pinholes in the colander, and then you if you face it towards the ground, you'll see a bunch of little crescents. Yeah, shapes. just like just like this, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's really cool because you know you see it happening. So you know, it's a really good way to view indirectly. We even go a little bit closer. Maybe you see those little C-shaped crescents. So you know, this is when the partial eclipse is, is taking place. So it's very cool. So not done just yet. You still have something you can see.
Yeah, and uh, you know, we've got not just things you can see, but also, you know, the yeah. feel. We were talking about like what it must feel like uh, to be out there with everyone, but also the animals. The creatures, yes, yeah. the night creatures. The crickets come out and they're chirping, usually just about 10 to 15 minutes before totality, and we heard a lot of that. Yeah, and even spiders will start to take down their web and then put it back up after the eclipse. That's an interesting yeah. thing that I did not know before <laughs> today. All of these interesting tidbits. And you know what else is interesting? Yeah. I'll let you tell them. We're getting smarter. We are? <laughs> we are. I don't know about me, but you definitely are. Uh, we're going to go to WCAX and yeah. their live coverage. And is our meteorologist, Peter Kavakowskis, who was at the 2017 total solar eclipse in Kentucky. Peter, this was fascinating. You told us it took you seven hours just to go 10 miles. Yeah, that was one thing that we were definitely not prepared for back in 2017. You know, they say the eclipse is a once in a lifetime experience. That traffic that we experienced back in 2017, also a very much a lifetime, once in a lifetime experience, saw taillights for miles back in 2017. And it took us a long time just to get anywhere. As a matter of fact, here we are in St. Johnsbury just a few minutes ago when we were in totality. We were talking about these streets jam packed and full of people but that definitely not the case anymore as everybody starts to shuffle out as a matter of fact local officials are warning people here about it major slowdowns especially on I-91 south as well as I-93 east so we are definitely gearing up for a good amount of traffic as we head through the next few minutes and over the next several hours as well for now live in uh, just St. Johnsbury Peter Kefikowskis Channel 3 News. Peter, thank you. And Vermont emergency management officials say they've learned a lot while preparing for this major statewide event. They say key to their success is the pre-planning work that went on and all the teamwork, making sure that they brought in as many partners as they could early on in the planning process instead of waiting until later. Throwing that net as wide as you can at the beginning. And if some of the agencies don't end up having a, a large part in it, it's easier to, to um, you know, kind of move them off than it is to bring them back on at the last minute. So really being all inclusive in your planning process is really what worked well for us. And we would do that again. He also said having agencies work together through the pandemic and multiple rounds of flooding and wild weather have also honed their operational skills and relationships. The eclipse is a bright spot for Vermont's economy. The tourism commissioner says it could be a $50 million shot in the arm for the state, if not more with all the visitors. And she says what Vermont does well, come together. That was live coverage from WCAX in Burlington, Vermont. Now we're heading over to Cleveland, Ohio, where we find WOIO's Jen Pachano. She joins us live. Hey there, Jen. Hey there, we're about 30 minutes past uh, max totality. Of course, we here in Cleveland, we're in the path of totality and boy, was it exciting. About two o'clock when the eclipse really started to begin in earnest, you could see everybody uh, put on their, their safety glasses here and start to kind of cheer. And then the crowd got a little quieter and a little quieter and a little quieter as, uh, as it got closer and closer to max totality. And it was really cool, kind of a, I would say a picnic vibe here. We're at Edgewater Park, which is right on the shore of Lake Erie. And so so people came all day long, kind of staked their claim in some good prime real estate, if you will, for viewing areas. The Metro Parks was here with really cool t um, telescopes to help people take a look at it. And other people brought their own telescopes. They brought filters for their cameras. And, and it was like a picnic. It really was. There were people grilling out. There was people playing uh, soccer and frisbee and all that. And then when max totality hit at 313, it really, it happened quick. The temperature dropped. It got significantly cold. Everybody that was in t-shirts put on their coats and their sweatshirts. Uh, we started to hear the birds chirping. I think they were a little confused as to what was going on. You saw that 360 sunset that even people who were not in the path of totality were treated to as well. Um, and it got a little bit quieter. People were cheering. It really was uh, an incredible and pretty moving uh, scene here in downtown Cleveland. And we were not alone. Uh, some 200,000 people uh, were predicted to be here in various parts. There's 30,000 
some people that are at the uh, Great Lakes Science Center just uh, to my east here. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame had a major event. And oh, by the way, the Guardians have their home opener. Uh, their first pitch is in about an hour now. So a very big day here in Northeast Ohio. And it is still going on. So there's still some people that are getting the tail end of this total solar eclipse. For now, reporting live, I'm Judd Pachano. Thank you so much, Jen, for that live report. I could feel it. We're going to go now, though, to St. Louis and to KMOV's Alex Gall. Yeah, Alex, you got to experience it firsthand. So what was it like for you, and what is the environment there like? Sure. So we are in Perry County. This is about an hour and 45 minutes south of St. Louis. St. Louis wasn't quite in the path of totality, just 99%. But right here in Perry County, we experienced four minutes and eight seconds of totality. It was incredible. Now, if you take a look behind me, things have cleared out a little bit. We're about 50 minutes past totality. We got a group over here that is still just basking in sort of the last sliver of this eclipse. You see their giant telescope that they brought out. We actually made the drive down here to Perry County with a couple of school groups from the St. Louis area, uh, some 11th graders, some 12th graders, and it was really cool to watch this alongside them. You know, we are lucky. This is our second eclipse in our area of totality in the last five years. So the students that we were with, they experienced it when they were fifth and sixth graders, and they said, eh, it was okay then. This time... They said it was a wildly different experience. They really appreciated it. They said they all wanted to set their cell phones down and just take in that moment, a moment that so many of them, you know, might not see again, or at least not see again for a very long time. So this is a cool spot to be in. This is an area that has gotten to see totality twice now. And we are grateful that we got to experience it along with them. Like everyone has been saying, you know, that temperature drop, the bugs came out, the birds came out. We've had beautiful weather. You can see just a few wispy clouds up in the sky. But when that moment of totality hit, we got an incredible view of that solar eclipse. We're reporting in Perry County. Alexis Otis, we'll send you back to you guys. Wow, Alexis, you're really painting a picture for us there. Um, I just wonder, were there any issues with uh, traffic or anything like that for people to get out and to, to see this eclipse? There was a lot of traffic, which is actually why it is very empty behind me, because all of these groups, a lot of them were school groups. They needed to hop back on their buses or their school vans and make it back up to St. Louis. There was another group actually that was from Memphis. They jumped back on their buses to get back to Memphis in time to get picked up after their school day. So we ended up taking a, a little bit of a roundabout way to get here to Perry County, a little windy roads. The teacher that we were with, she said, you know, there was a little bit of car sickness, a lot of traffic, but all of it was worth it to watch those students experience that totality, that four minutes of just real life science experience. So it was cool to, to see. So the traffic has, has really been worth it down here. Alexis, I know you mentioned that you guys had a different total, total solar eclipse about five years ago. What has been the most surprising thing about this one for you? What was your experience like? So in 2017, I was not working. I was off that day, luckily, and got to experience it with my family. But we only had about one minute of totality back in 2017. So this time, getting four minutes and eight seconds was really incredible. I will still say, fastest four minutes ever. Barely had a moment to really take it all in myself while also recording and capturing this sort of historic moment and sharing it with our viewers here in St. Louis. But there was a moment that I grabbed my photographer and I said, you know, let's pause for a second. Let's both take this in, look up at that sky and really enjoy it. So it was a cool experience, especially for four minutes. We'll send it back to you guys. Thank you so much, Alexis Zotos. Wow. Yeah, you got to take that moment. You got to be present. Incredible. Okay, really quick. Best thing today. Uh, just all of it. I mean, it was just amazing. <laughs> I just the, the cheers and the excitement. It was just amazing. I love seeing how dark it got and everyone cheering. And the children oh. getting excited about STEM. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> we have followed the entire path of totality. We really have. And it's been a blast having you guys here. Sandra and Ross, Rashida Kaba here, all super excited about this eclipse. And we're so thankful that you guys joined in. Thank you us. so much for watching the Great American Eclipse with us. I am Deborah Alfaron, and thank you. Rethink how you get breaking news. A rooftop collapses at a suburban hotel. With Local News Live, you get the big national stories direct from local reporters.
Reporters who know the streets and the people. Authentic, unfiltered, live where the story is. Stay close, stay connected, because the big breaking stories are best told by those who live it. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always. Always streaming, always free. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. Rethink how you get breaking news. Our rooftop collapses at a suburban hotel. With Local News Live, you get the big national stories direct from local reporters. Reporters who know the streets and the people. Authentic, unfiltered, live where the story is. Stay close, stay connected, because the big breaking stories are best told by those who live it. Local News Live, the news that hits home. Always streaming, always free. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is vaping? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you didn't even turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I gotta get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Let's go. Oh, honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. There are almost 6 million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey.